what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, need, sports encyclopedia. Where you at, Steve Kim? Got trend in the cut. Yeah, trend in the cut. Coach, yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? You at, man? Uh, in the gym, shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. No, no. Darnell is the ball state legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that, that are like-minded and, and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. Hop, hop you you are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his power. What is, what is wrong with you? you oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. I am him. You's not it. What's the topic? With your logic when I flow. Big Komodo, I was talking. Gotta get back. To letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and back it. Smitty and Jason Brown kill the ass a rap. We won the games been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and so that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of you know the show, bro. The gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's the real coach JB here. It is free game Friday, fired up Friday, and we got a loaded lineup for you today. Don't miss it. Big Jeff Nadu joins us. We're going to break down college hoops, NCAA March Madness right around the corner, especially after yesterday we had Coach Frank Martin on the show. Um, unbelievable guest. We got a lot to dive into today, though, on this free game Friday. It is fired up Friday. Don't miss it. Pound the like. Subscribe. Become a member if you're not one. Like I said, we need 1,000 members, 50,000 subscribers. So go over there and check it out. I'm just another kid from Compton. Let's get this show underway. Uh, Jerry Jones ordered by a judge to submit a DNA test. Woo! Someone claims that he has a daughter with her. Another one out of wedlock. This isn't the first time, by the way. This ain't the first time this has happened. All right? This has come up in the big D, uh, just contrary to belief. This ain't the first time. This organization starts with Jerry Jones. He wants to be the GM. He wants to be the head coach. He wants to be the shot caller. He has ruined and cursed this organization since he ran Jimmy Johnson out of town. And they haven't recovered since. You wonder why they have so much drama year in and year out with players, staffers, coaches. In the Big D, it's because this owner is batshit crazy. I can't wait to dive into it. Uh, we're going to break this down in totality as the show goes. Uh, it's, some, it's some crazy shit. Jerry Jones always says, these owners, dog, from Kraft getting a rub and tug to Jerry Jones, money talks and bullshit walks. Just remember that. Uh, but it's maybe, maybe mama drama in the Big D. Uh, Lucy, you know about that drama out there in the Dow in the D in Dallas. Uh, you got a bunch of shit birds out there every single year running around. It is what it is. We're going to dive into it. That's why the Dallas Cowboys continue to Dallas Cowboy every single year. Without further ado, it's fired up Friday. It's free game Friday. We got a loaded lineup. Big, big Smitty and I will, will run the show till big Jeff jumps on. Um, Matt can't make it on this morning. Um, he'll be back Monday. So let's dive into our main man, Far East Side, Nap Town's finest, LeBron Hairline Havin, Ball State legend, Fox Sports working, AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving our main man. Welcome him in, Big Smitty. Clap it up for Big Smitty. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's uh, uh, uh. What's going on, chat, man? It's Friday or Friday. What's going on, JB? When you speak about me, JB, speak, speak, speak of me like at the, at the, 
at a certain level. Like, I ain't like your other co-hosts back in the days. I'm not like your who was the backwards question mark you always you always refer to. I'm not, I'm not Upside one of our smoke bottle. Yeah, yeah. I'm not one of our special guests who are amazing. I'm I'm your co-host. It's the coach JB show with Big Smitty. When you say Big Smitty, I need I need some authority in your voice. I need some I need some excitement in your voice. When you don't you come on the show. Hairline having uptown wearing big smitty. You sound like Eeyore, like you sad I'm on the show. Be excited that I'm in this place to be. Come on now. So I had a, I had a horrible night. Um, what happened, JB? What happened? I ain't really slept. So I'm reading. I'm doing a project in my in my in my walk-in closet in the in the, in the master bedroom. Okay. Ah. Uh, been working on it for quite some time. Eyes are burning, you know, and you haven't slept really. And then you finally yeah. lay down and you sleep and you wake up because the hour hour go by and I got to get up for this. Damn. So I redo the whole closet. I take everything out the closet. I build. I take down all my shelves in the closet. I build shelves. Uh-huh. So this female showed me this, this hack. Female? The female showed me a hack. They they did like they did a, a crazy they did a crazy hack with Pat. Pat's one of Pat's assistants taught me to hack, showed me the hack. Well, she came down and showed me the hack and did it. The hack. It's like a target, it's a target hack. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Basically, it's a cheap way to do your closet, but make it look legit. You go get these $50 shell bookshelves. And you tie them together and you put them in your closet and you can make it look like a legitimate ass closet if you know how to do it, right? Mm. I got lied to by Pat's assistant. I'm going to have a phone call with her today. She lied to you? She never mentioned that the closet hack is not. It's not for grown men. Who's it for? Where I hang my shirt at. I hung my shirts up, Smitty. There's a board. There's a there's a shelf halfway. Yeah. All my shirts are like fucking. If this was my shirt hanging up in the thing, I hang it. <laughs> the bottom. This is the bottom. Oh man. In the shelf. You no know, room. Smitty, that's not the whole problem. So we figured that out. I'm like, all right. So now I got to put bars in between the shelves and then I'm gonna hang my shit on the on the bars. Okay. So I do that. I got that put in. I drilled it in, get that going. It's all good. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> then I don't have enough. I got so much shit though. I got so many shoes and clothes, homies. I, I I go I'm going around the thing hours on this thing, hour after hour after hour. AE helping. And I'm putting it all the way around the corner. Finally, like everything's in. We're hanging all the shit back up. We put the shoes back in. We got all the shit putting back in. <sighs> Fucking boom, box, box, blah, blah. Fuck everything. Just rips out the studs. Everything rips down, falls down, rips out. All my shit's all the floor. Now I threw the hammer through the wall. I was hot as firecracker. Ah, uh, now I have a big hole in the wall. I threw a hammer through the wall. Got anger management classes. I probably have to go seek anger management. Oh, I ain't going to. No, I ain't going to no damn anger management. But I did throw the hammer. Can we see uh, the hole in the wall? I mean, you probably do need some anger management classes. You, you know, it, it'll probably help you cope with some anger. Some, and we talked about this before, JB. I think you got some internal anger. So many fake ass, caring ass. Blitzbird twenty twenty. I guess this is my co-host. This is my guy. His pain is my pain. I share his pain. We're in pain right now. The we're in mourning. We're, we're mourning see, right see, now. See, all the women in here, like Lucy, everybody's like, yeah, that's, you can display your handbags with the Target closet hack. The fucking Target closet hack. If you're listening, ma'am, that helped me do this and made showed me this is the way. I do not appreciate you. <laughs> you set me up for massive failure. Now I'm going to spend another day Going back in the closet, getting ghetto hood with it, and I gotta put up old school shower rods all around the motherfucker to hang my shit up. 
Damn, man. I mean, this is why the young generation like myself, we just prefer to hire outside help to put things together. I know you're Bob the Builder and you can fix it and do it all, but I think if you would have had some hired help, they would have stopped halfway through like, hold the fuck on. These walls, this wall ain't got ain't got the, the right resistance, the right studs, the right whatever for this project to be done. How about we pivot and we try something different? You took the advice of a, 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 a trusted friend's assistant, which is great. Your your expertise is is that of a coach. It's not that of a of a, of a fucking construction worker, by a builder of. Like, I know you built some successful things. You built your fucking stu- uh, studio, your 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 lounge. You you've done a lot of great things, but that's not your expertise. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like you should have hired some outside help for this project. And I'm sorry for you, JB. I can tell by your face expression right now. You're pissed. You're frustrated. You don't feel like even doing the show. You're just pushing through right now for our lovely fans. And they all appreciate that, JB. They do. That's all good. I'm going to go in there today. I'm a, See, I didn't want to spend no five grand on a closet that nobody's ever going to see. Fuck that. To me, it's a waste of money. Jabron wasn't around. Jabron had to leave. He had to go back to work. So he couldn't help. But Keith Smith. You don't appreciate shit. Even when Keith show love, he still get hell. Leave Keith alone. This probably our he probably our top five biggest fans. Like top five biggest fans we have on the show. Oh, he's not even in the tw- top thirty. Who top five right now? No order. No order. No, no order. order. Uh, Lucy, Hector, Joe, Sean. Sean, no, Sean Waffle don't fuck with me. I've learned that a lot the last couple yeah, of he, he, he do. He, he did. Nah, nah, I, I heard how your voice, how he's like, oh, he do. Nah, if a motherfucker fuck with you. You ain't got to like have that sound in your voice. You, you didn't say, oh, no, nah, he fuck with you. You kind of came in like, yeah, he do. This, he, old school, this, he old school like me. He this whole week, Sean had called me. Sean had called me all types of shit in the chat. I didn't saw it. <laughs> you dumbass. This take is fucking trash. This is the stupid shit I've ever heard in my life. Motherfucking <laughs> hey, go back. Waffle been, been on my ass balls. He been going crazy. <laughs> Even right hey, now, uh, the camera's blurry as fuck. I'm like, damn, he, he, he finding everything. Hey, you're clear, your family, your camera is blurry as shit right now. Is it blurry? Yeah. You got you got Jada. You got even though well, Eddie's not a top five. I mean, there's not even top five. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of. I'm talking about like current. Like keep been grinding this past year. At least I'll say that he has been like consistent. He been you know what I mean. I got D. I would put D. Jones over Keith. D. Jones been longer. D. Jones been living longer. D. Jones been on there. Uh, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Yeah. I fuck, I fuck with Keith though. Keith's my guy. That's my cousin. Yeah, that's, that's my cousin of the show. Keith's a slap dick for sure. Um, you probably beat your ass though. Can't do it. We ain't gonna be able to do it. Those Mark, be Mark, Mark right out. He's been around for a few years. He right about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uncle Boots been around. Uncle uh, KCD BD. He left. He left. He only here for the season. Um, uh, right. I noticed that. It's funny how we really do have like pure just NFL season fans and crew, and then when this just start, they all just cut out. Yeah. Yeah. Um my shit looks so out. clear. Is my shit still blurry for real? Yeah, blurry as hell. Um it, it must be y'all Wi Fi. Nah, it's your you're in. I, I got the Ethernet cl- uh cord plugged up. I ain't even so I don't know. Usually we'd be having about seven hundred people already. We only got a three fifty. Two I days might, in a row. Slow. I might just turn this shit off then. Hey, I, I went on uh I went on some people's show yesterday. Low as fuck too. I was like, yeah, I don't feel so bad. I'm like, wonder why. I wonder why it's low. I'm telling you that first what after the season, I'm telling you. Nah, but our first two days we had a thousand, a thousand. So nah, I don't, I don't know. Three days are are uh, we all had double digits views. It was thousand, 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 double digit, double digit, double digit. Now it's like a complete opposite. Now we getting like ten views per show live. But we gonna show love to those ten viewers, man, because they take their time to come tune in. You know, I was catching up. I was in the Discord yesterday, finally catching up with a little bit. You know, so everybody has different like work schedules now. It's just it's what I'm learning. You know, some people like I think it was Lucy who said she can only come in the first 30 minutes of the show, I believe. Uh, and then she has to cut out because she has to go to work. And then um, I think it was Jada 
who can come in and out the first two hours, but third the third hour she's at work. So I, I, I'm just listening to, I'm just learning. Everybody got different fucking schedules, of course. And I don't know if they changed over to, to NFL and now. I have no idea. But who knows, man? We're going to keep showing love and turning up for the fans who are here and for you and I and our passion, man. Shout out to Trucker Trev, though, for the super sticker. It is Friday. Trucker Trev. Let me see. Which one is Trucker Trev? He's got to be on the right with the oh, beard. Right, the beard, yep. Those, those are his kids. Racist? You know what? He's an outlier. He grew up in a racist area, um, but he didn't go to, to the, the local school. He went to like another school that was more like in the inner city. So he has he actually like grew up around brothers and stuff like that. Um, you know, he got a couple fights early on just because there was a couple things that he would say. Um, you know, certain terms he would use that was racist, but he just didn't understand because he was young and in his own environment, they were using those words. So to his defense, he just didn't know. So he got beat up a couple times when he was young, learned from it, and now he's he's cooler than a, than a fan, bro. Like he's just working, you know. I'm driving around the fucking country, take care of his kids, cool with brothers, watch this show. I fuck with Trucker Trey. Trucker Trey, he said he got beat up a few times though. When he's young, he did young. get beat up. Though. Maybe you beat that. We got new, we got new uh, female in the house, Regine. Regine. Regine Franklin, how you doing, Miss Regine? Is it Regine or are you missing the A? You misspell your name, Miss Regina. It's Regine. Hi, everyone, tuning in from Florida. Miss Regine got that look in her eye. Like I ain't gonna say because like, I, I, I'm gonna respect her as a as a uh, you know she's about forty six. You know I respect her, but she got like a certain look in her eye. I know you feeling what I'm feeling, JB. Like she, like she might be kind of. She with it, that's what I'm saying. That's basically what I'm saying. I think she with it, JB. So you might want to slide in them DMs, find out her Instagram, and, and do your thing. Sister. She says yeah. Regine. Regine, I told you what it was. And you could tell she, she, you know, you could tell she used to be like strap strap. When she was like my age, when she was like 25, she used to be ink, ink, ink. <gasps> Power lifter. Okay, all right. He out squat you right now, that cat. <laughs> you know what? Right now, today, he probably couldn't do it. <laughs> and my legs, weak. These, these are the weakest my legs have been in my life. Ever. Like, my life. L-Y-F-E. Life. He still couldn't do it. Because, like, my mentality, JB. You know, speaking of the gym, I was at the gym yesterday at Fox. And we had, like, a whole little, you know, you know, men get together. We start arguing. We start competing. And uh, basically, James Jones said he could hit 225 for 25 reps right now. He was like, hell no, I know you can't. This motherfucker went to the, <laughs> went to the gym, and James Jones hit it for 32 reps. 32 reps. Now, you could argue some of the reps he didn't fully extend, whatever. But I don't know. When are you gonna when are you gonna listen to your old wise James comedy? Jones? That's my that's my guy though. But when are you gonna listen to grown man cock strong strength is different. He did it with a little warm up too, like was hitting it though. Hey, 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 hey. I mean, that's that's what I do. I do that right now, easy. JB, you're 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 still a quarterback, number one. Number oh. two, you you never was a lifter though, which is fine. Like a quarterback don't need to be too strong. You How do you know what I was? Ruben, can you guys tell this dude who who what I used to bench and do what I used to do? Ruben, These cats don't call, know Ruben tell, tell us, Ruben. Tell us, God, Ruben. And don't lie. Don't keep it real, Ruben. Keep it all the way 1,000. he don't understand. I don't understand. He don't get it. What was your max? 225 on bench? 365. No, what the fuck? My match was 365. My max was 365. I was the strongest quarterback in Street and Smith magazine. Go try to find it. I did. Yeah, it's all my thousand pound clever. Easy. I was twelve. I was twelve fifty on three lifts, actually. So tell me your power clean and squat. So well, we did hand clean because I. That's I cool. Didn't... Same thing. School. School. Yeah. Uh, my hand clean was two seventy five. All right, I believe that. My squat. My bench was 365, and my squat was 515. Now, this one rep max. And this yeah, ain't, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. We're, so, we're talking about max. Talking yeah, about I was max. 12, 12, 50 in three lift. I, was a, I got the T-shirt. Come on, don't miss me. I was as cock strong as it gets. I'm still cock strong as it gets. 
Don't get it. My shit was like 385 on the clean. I think my shit was. I think they stopped me at 605 on the squad. Thank like, you, Ruben. Let them know, Ruben. I think yeah, they stopped yeah, me yeah. at 605. Ruben used to be strong. Ruben used to bench almost 400 pounds. His, Ruben's arms only this long. Right. Ruben, that motherfucker. Oh, 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 oh. That motherfucker. Yeah, I I, my bitch wasn't that high. I think I only hit like 435 pack. on the bench. Long arms, Smitty. Long arm people. People don't want to understand. Way harder to bench. Long arms. That's true. I give it to I you. Short, you got short little baby arms. You could do. You should be up bench five hundred. <laughs> I get about four thirty five, man. Bench it like this. Smitty bench it like this. Doing back arm shit. Talk what about, about clean it. though? What about power clean? Hand clean? Well, it sounds like I'm way more explosive than you. You got two seventy. I did, I did that shit sophomore year in high school. <laughs> You're D line man. You should. I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't have to do all that. <laughs> when am I doing power clean in the game? You got a power clean old lineman. I don't. <laughs> you ain't got a bench press in the game, but you did it. So don't 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 try to pick it up. No, I help throwing. Bench press has a lot to do. You got to protect, get a hit, chest, lats, back, all that core. Come on, man. I'm breaking the dog down. though. Like I'm just. Oh, I'm just a dog. I'm nasty. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, okay. follow my squad video one more time that we using the intro and put it in here in the next five minutes. Cause JB need he need a reminder. He need a fucking reminder. I'm a fucking beast. Like I'm a, I'm really I'm really I was psycho now that I really think back and look at what I was doing. I'm a different breed, man. I'm a different breed. You not boy, you don't even get down. Watch this right here. Look, look, look. Slap the shit out of me. Look, grown like, man right here. This is grown man in here. He's a grown man. I used to stiff arm little D lineman like look at this shit. Look at my chest, y'all. My shoulders. Look at this. Deep breath. Little. It little. Ah, look how you easy I did it. You really didn't even get down low enough. Look at my look, 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 look. Pause at the end. Pause at the end. When I flex, I want you to I want you to look at my fucking shoulder as soon as I flex. Watch this. Look how easy I hit this. Super. I could did it for 25 reps. 605. Look at that. Oh my God, JB. <laughs> look at that shoulder right here. Look at this shoulder. That little D lineman. I would tore your ass up. Ooh, that little boy, Lee D line. I used to call that little boy. Get out of here, little boy. I, God, I wish you could have played the same you. time somehow. I wish it was a way to like. I would stiff arm you with my left hand and still throw the ball. Like, you I would have grabbed your hand. arm. Look, I don't grabbed get it. your wrist. Y'all, it's okay. Smitty I would have grabbed it. your wrist with one hand and pushed the elbow down the other and broke your whole fucking arm if you would have tried to stiff arm me. I never broke a bone. Because you ain't go against me. Never broke a bone again. You, you ain't go against me. You play. You played out there in, on, on the West Coast. We get nasty in the Midwest. We get nasty in the man where it's freezing cold. You in there play football and fucking the, the negative 10 degree while it's snowing and ice and had to get your fucking face put into the dirt, into the ice. We did that. We grew up Playing in that environment. College, negative 13. Man, we don't hear all that. We, I've done it all. Let's get to the quarter today. We ain't even touching the quarter today. We it's, over here. It's Friday or Friday. It's different on Fridays. Brought to you by Bet Online. Head on over there. What up, what up, what up, man? The Real Coach JB here for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course, for the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. Text, you don't read. You're just the most illiterate group of generation I've ever seen is TikTokers. Oh, what's up? All right, we're back. Um, Every uh, time we come in from a break, JB is like giving somebody some game, cut somebody out. Like, like, like I said, will you be able to coach again? Like, able means like I got shot or hit in the, by a car. Like, I got... Yeah, I, I said. You sh I said the question should have been, "Do you want to coach again?" Yeah, I'm able to coach any time, motherfucker. You act like I did. I got cancer. 
Maybe, are you, are you, maybe, maybe you lost your touch like Bill Belichick. Maybe you can't can, you can't connect. I don't get these low views the last two days. I'm tripping on even TikTok low. I'm trying to trip. I'm tripping on something, but we got something going on. I don't know. You've been talking uh, about saying the wrong stuff. Thumbnail, thumbnail looks fire to me. I don't know. Thumbnail get it. crazy for all right. Quote of the day, Big Smitty. Let's get to the dude. We do the show regardless. It's one person, a hundred thousand person people. We do the show for us because because we this is our passion. We love it. Smitty, life is hard. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner we can start overcoming the challenges. That's crazy. We're just talking about the fucking numbers right now. I love that. That's perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Contrary to belief. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over to Prize Picks and let them know Coach JB sent you. Life isn't fair, so it's important to make the most of what you have. Mm. Again, right? With what we're talking. It's crazy. Crazy how that shit works, ain't it? Got to maximize it. Let's see. Who's this? Okay. All right. Poll question. Let's have another fire poll question. Uh, Drop the chat. Drop it in the chat below. Um, Smitty. (laughs) Ah, shoot. (laughs) Would you rather go to bed alone forever? Mm. Or share a bed with someone forever. Oh, that's, that's an easy one for me. I'd rather share a bed with someone forever. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm not about to be by myself the rest of my life, just sitting there in the bed, just like just like you mean literally like like we're stuck in the bed forever. Is that what you mean? Or, or you mean only when it's time to go to bed, you can yeah. never sleep with somebody. Yeah, when you, you go to bed, when you go to bed, you go to bed alone. Are you still able to like hang with women and, and do shit with them prior to you going to sleep? I'm not, I'm not cause I, I that not like like for example, let, let's say it's fucking midnight and my fucker, I got an AE come over and we doing our thing yeah. and then I tell her to leave as we get done and I go to sleep. All right, that's cool. I guess like you can you can maintain that, but if you're saying that like nah, like the bedroom is just like you can't even bring nobody in that motherfucker. It's just you. It's just you by yourself. I don't know. Like, I I need I need some togetherness. Like we were not meant to be here by ourselves. You know what I mean? Like for for the Bible believers, for the for the like they man was built first, and it was like something is up. Like you need some. You something ain't clicking right. They brought Eve. Adam was here. They brought Eve. Like men, we need women. We need the opposite sex with us. Like I don't get that single solo shit, JB. Even if I was single right now, I'm I'm having company over. <laughs> Best believe that I'm having company over. I'm not gonna be by myself. You get depressed. You start thinking about too much shit when you by yourself. You fuck around and go do some crazy shit. You be by yourself for too long. That's why I be checking on your ass. Cause I'm like JB. You know that's why you throwing hammers through the wall and shit. You fucking by yourself. Hey, can we can we read some uh some of my DMs? Mm-hmm. JB's DMs. Don't say the person's name though. Keep that in- incognito. What goes down in the DMs stays in the DMs. Where's that one I was reading? Jesse Jazz said, I need that male warmth. I be cold. Ooh. I I, I go to bed slow low, I wake up so low. <laughs> What I do in between those times is all what I do. But I go to bed solo, I wake up solo. <laughs> and I'm going to do that forever and ever. I mean, now, my wife is a nurse, so I already sleep by you myself. You might spend the night one night or something. Nah, but. you said you can't. You know? So, I mean, every, every woman that, that you mess with got to leave when you get done, basically. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. you just said, you told me yourself, you said this morning you had an AE helping you put the class together at three in the morning. So they didn't leave. <laughs> they did leave. <laughs> when? Just now? Motherfucker, like, that don't count. That's, that's yeah, overnight. This morning. What do you mean? I woke up in the bed alone. What do you mean? So the mother came over at three in the morning to help you with the closet. No, no, no. They helped me all day, all night. All right, then. So they stayed the night. You just got done at 4.35 o'clock. That, that, that's spending the night, JB. No, it's not. They left. They didn't spend the night. We never slept. Hold on, bro. If motherfuckers stay there till 4 35 o'clock in the morning. What, what is that? It's, it's a new day. We never slept. So y'all were just working all fucking day. Y'all, y'all didn't, y'all didn't watch TV. Y'all ain't lay down. Y'all ain't she ain't AE you nothing. Nah, we grind over here. 
This motherfucker, he the only motherfucker I know that call over AEs to like grind and work. Motherfucker, he, <laughs> he, call, he call women over to lay down bricks and fucking build. Yeah. <laughs> Change the oil and shit. Why? Like why? Why not? I don't get. Why not? Tire why rotation not? and shit. Why is that a problem? Jay, JB don't do booty call. He do work calls. <laughs> hey, you busy? <laughs> I need you to come oh, over here and change this antenna. The... Jay said he be using hoes. <laughs> One of the messages I was reading you the other day. Man, you get so many DMs, JB. Like you probably didn't lost that motherfucker. That was like on Tuesday, I think. Damn, I couldn't even tell you how to find them. I don't know how to find a motherfucking name. Was it in your request folder? Or was it in your main uh, primary DMs? I don't know. Fuck. Damn, JB. I was reading you I was reading you a couple. Of, I, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to start screenshotting. And we're going to do a segment. Can you not find no good ones? I'm sure you got some good ones in there somewhere. You remember the one that the, uh, the young coach was asking you about? I can't find them. You can't find a young coach who you was cussing out and giving them the real. That was on. Was it on Twitter? Maybe. I'm looking on Twitter. I'm looking on Instagram. I can't find me. I got so many fucking D. I I can't even. I can't find him. Shout out to my brother Max, man. Max said my. He said Smitty Cameron is clear as day. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I can't find the the shit. Anyway, some kid. It was a kid. One kid. It was a high school kid. He started off the DM with hey. And he's like, you want to come coach in Alabama or come coach high school in Alabama? And I said, "Who's who the fuck is Hay? Right. And then he responded back something about, you, you ain't coaching unless you're coaching Alabama, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you couldn't, you would fucking be calling your mommy in the first 30 minutes after my first team meeting, you soft pussy. Now go away. Shut the fuck up. Basically, that's kind of what my DMs look like. But I gotta, I'll, I'll, I'll get them and find them. You got, we got to prepare for shit like that, JB. You can't, you can't just come on the show and be like, I'm gonna go to my DM. No, we gotta. Yeah, I mean, go. I don't know. No, what. no, no, no. I'm telling you, we prep for that. That's something we do the night before the show, early morning. Hey, Big Smitty, I'm gonna do something different. That I'm gonna get take some screenshots. Baby, you get this in. You can't do that spur of the moment. Cause now, look at us now, JB. Look at us now. We're sitting here. We don't have the DMs. The fans are mad at us. I'm pissed off. You're pissed off. Everyone's pissed. Hey, he said he want to make you cook me dinner. Well, Jazzy Jazz said you be using hoes. You don't want to see that one. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. I, I thought I had it. I had them. Your DMs ain't popping for real. You was dreaming about that. Uh, <laughs> let's move uh, on. Let's keep it, had, let's keep it flowing. Had, though, keep it flowing. You know, I had 35,000 DMs like in 24 hours like, when the show hit the air on my big IG when it was big. I bet you it did. Deleted it. 35,000. I couldn't even get through it. I bet you did. No, I never got through it. They deleted my account. I never got through it. There's some, there some stuff in there, too. Huh? Ooh, nothing um, there, maybe. <laughs> anyway. I'd rather sleep alone, by the way. Back to the poll question. Um, All the time. <laughs> all the time. Big Jeff's going to join us later on. Uh, we're going to talk some March Madness. Um, Smitty, let's get into the show, man. Uh, what's your take on Jerry Jones is uh, in the Big D? <laughs> Do the bitches think he got Big D, maybe, or something? Alexandra I Davis, 26 years old, sued Jones in March, claiming the 80-year-old billionaire was her father and had been paying her and her mother hush money for years. My thing is, if he's been paying you and your mama hush money, why are you talking? <laughs> That's the opposite of the hush. That's the reason why I'm giving you and your mama this money in the first place. You just cut, you just messed up your money that you was getting, your, your money your mama was getting, number one. Number two, my question for you, JB, because I don't understand how this shit works. In the event that he is her father, what does that mean? Like, does it mean what? Like, like she going to sue him for the time that he wasn't there? He Like, there's no, there's nothing in, like, legal terms that says... He has to put her in his wheel or something like that. Your will is your decision. Motherfuckers don't put their kids in there all the time. So, like, if that is her father, what's the actual thing that's going to happen? You still control what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. Maybe I don't have the full education. That's why I'm asking you this. But in the, the day, listen, I'm not surprised. He a billionaire. You know what I mean? How much ass Jerry Jones then got over the years? You know what I mean? He a, this motherfucker got all money. He didn't. He didn't seen it all. He didn't been with it all. Didn't done it all. 
shout shout to shawty low he didn't done it all so he probably do got a few kids running around you know around the world <laughs> like i would like if i was a billionaire jb like would a be a billionaire and I, I got all money i can do anything i want to do ain't no telling how many a big <laughs> money do keep running around the world right now so it probably is his kid and that is what it is if you had a B with a billionaire with a B, how many kids do you have? What? I'm just saying, if I was a young rich motherfucker like Jerry Jones, young rich. So if you was young like, rich, you so, you single and you saying I ain't say that. I'm gonna say I don't I don't know what I'll be doing. He be putting himself in a trick bag, y'all. He nah, don't. Say me ain't. Say me not a real one. That's what I'm learning about. Yeah, That's if what if I'm you're learning. Like, if Oh, no, I'm really at the bro code, really. Like, you know, wifey walked in right now. She be high. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna have to talk with your wife. I'm gonna hit her up. I'm gonna hit her up tomorrow. I'm a, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm surprised you. I'm gonna get your, I'm gonna get your AE on here. I'm gonna get a few of your AEs on here at the same time, and you ain't gonna know. I'm like, yeah, yeah, keep fucking around. Hey, we gonna be special guest, y'all. It's Friday, Friday, y'all. Special oh. surprise guest. That's right, plural. Some of JB's AEs, a brand new simic. JB's AEs. Bring them on, Bailey. It's gonna be two, three, three of them all on the screen at the same time. Hey, Jason. I thought I was your favorite. I thought I was your favorite. I thought I was your favorite. And you're gonna be fucking stuck live on the show. I ain't gonna know what to do. Keep playing with me. Never stuck. Never stuck. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really care about what a billionaire does. Robert Kraft's weirdo fuck. Jerry Jones, weirdo fuck. Jerry Jones has not recovered since. He fucked over Jimmy Johnson and ruined the Cowboys' legacy. Cowboys have had like eight Super Bowls with Troy Aikman. They fucked that up. Barry Switzer came in, stole one. Just the team fell apart, though. They couldn't handle him. He couldn't handle them. They knew NFL from college is galaxies away. Couldn't handle it. Jerry Jones fucked it up ever since, and he's got a curse over their ass ever since. Bill Parcells went in there, couldn't do shit, had T.O., uh, they've had fucking just they've had great coaches can't do it couldn't do it he is the problem jerry jones when is he gonna realize that shit i'm curious i'm curious when jerry jones is gonna finally say all right i mean he's gonna die dog and his son his son's gonna take over it's like it's like it's like al davis and the raiders situation He's done, but he, he's really a good owner, though. I mean, he talks a lot and probably talks more than you would want your owner and GM or whatever to talk. But I mean, look at that team, bro. Like, he's done everything he's supposed to do to put this team in position to win and be successful and be great. And they just they fall short. He can he only do so much. He can't go out there and play for him. He can't go hey, out there and coach for him. Sometimes, dog, you fall short because of who's at the top. He always fucking it up. They always fucking it up. Let me ask you: If this guy really set the precedent, though, as a, as a great owner, if he's such a great owner, I don't think he'd be in all this drama all the time. And let me ask you something: If your boss, let's just say any boss you work for, came in fucking loaded, bitches, whatever he did, fucking cussing out motherfucker. You would too. Well, if a boss does it, shit, why not? Like they do the dumb shit because he does it too. And it's a, a leader reflects leaderships create more leaders. Leaders create more leaders, not followers. This motherfucker creates followers in Dallas. Look at all the fucking players that are on that roster. They're all some wannabe ass motherfuckers in some sort or aspect. What's they want to do? Podcast. Fucking what's they want to do? Fucking jack off drills before the game. Like it's a shit show over there, man. It's a fucking shit show. It always will be. Dallas will never win a Super Bowl in my lifetime. <laughs> um, mm. They better go get a new coach. They better go get a new court quarterback. They better go get a new culture. I'm telling you. Smitty. Caleb Williams refuses medical examination at the NFL Combine. What the fuck is always going on with this motherfucker? Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. If I'm an owner, I'm just telling you right now, I'm deterred from this cat. I and wonder what's wrong. Me. Like, what's the reason that you would do this outside of you having something that you know would be alarming. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't even think of... Do you know he's the first ever, ever... I'm reading it. ...to decline a medical examination? That's what I'm, I've never heard this before. Like you said, it's never happened. So I, I, I'm not even for sure. I'm almost shocked. I'm just kind of confused on... Uh, I understand not wanting to throw, you know, uh, although I would even prefer... Then, even then. 
Although I prefer you to throw, I understand it's happened before. I understand you don't want to run your 40. You want to save for the pro day. Okay, I get it. But the the medical examination, I'm not fully understanding that piece. Like, again, to me, it's a sign that you're probably hiding something that you don't want out because you feel like it may deter you or deter teams from wanting to choose you. That's the only thing possible. Um, Unless, I mean, maybe his agent is like, bro, you are a lock for number one. Don't do anything because anything you do is can only hurt you and not help you. Maybe that's what his agent is telling him. But a medical examination, bro, like just get a, I got a medical examination the other day. I was I was damn near flawless. You know, it's okay. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's weird. Made up human or something? What's going on? I don't get it. Why you now Deshaun Watson got micro penis. Sean Watts got micro penis. Maybe Caleb got a micro penis. I, I learned about what a micro penis was on this show a couple years ago. We broke down to Sean Watson having a micro penis. We had a female on the show. She broke it down. I never knew what a micro penis was. Have you are you familiar with a micro penis? I'm not, but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say pause now just to kind of protect us. Now, see, when you're grown men and you secure, Smitty, with who you are, you ain't got to say pause. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It is. Everyone want to test my manhood. Anytime I'm right here, I'll send you the address. Here's the issue I got. A micro penis is a very small penis that's like kind of like – remember remember back in the day we had a belly button innies and outies? Yeah. Love I got an any dick. <laughs> how do I, but how do y'all – like, how do y'all know this? Oh, because a female pointed it out to me. We brought it on the show. We posted it. A female came out on the show and posted it and talked about it. And we were like, damn, Lucy, all the females in here. She, I remember that show specifically. Lucy and them were in the show, and they were like, oh, yeah, it's a micro penis." I'm like, damn, how do you know that? Apparently, a micro penis shows itself, Smitty, in, like, yoga pants, tight pants, draws whatever you wear so like i can't speak for you or me or i'm gonna speak for me not you if i got into like some like just i don't know some 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 like skin tight draws or or some type of i would never wear yoga pants but if i got in them there's gonna be something showing like there's nothing showing on this motherfucker (laughs) This mother got, no, I didn't even see balls and no homo or whatever you call it. I didn't even see balls, no, just, homie. Just say pause. You just supposed to say nah, pause. I can't do that. I didn't even see balls. <laughs> I'm like, where's this man's genitalia? I don't get it. I don't get it. We broke I'm it glad up. I wasn't on that episode because I, I had a female like, on the show and uh, I was nah, getting jesty before, before I joined. You'd have did, you did that shit on the porch podcast. Stop. Ah, playing. nah. We ain't never broke down no man's area yeah, on the porch. Well, you were doing it on there. Female. It's a we female even, doing it. It wasn't like me and the homies doing it. JB, you want to bring on the the, the 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 Drake video on here? I said, nah, we can't do that, JB. We're not talking about that on on the on the damn. We not. Uh, I'm just saying. Maybe he got something to hide, Smitty. I don't know. I, I'm just saying, maybe he hiding the motherfucker something. He got eyes up. Now I don't know the medical examination if they really looking That's at. That's what your- I'm saying. I, they, they don't even check. I don't think they don't. They don't do the cough no more. That's some old shit. They don't touch the balls. <coughs> they don't do that shit no more. That's some old yeah. shit. I, I when I was a kid, I used to, I used to look forward to that though, because I always had female doctors. So they be like, "Hey, you gotta put your pants down." I used to look forward to that shit. When I was like, you know, ten years old. But anyway. Yeah. I don't know, JB. They ain't they ain't nothing my business. You know what I mean? I mean, he doing he doing his own thing, but we'll see. I don't know what Keller Williams is on. That's that's the biggest, that's the bigger thing. He's trying to get ownership. He ain't throwing, he ain't running, he ain't he's saying a lot of stuff he ain't doing. He ain't going to this team. I'm like, this motherfucker better be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Cause he he talking about a lot of stuff that he ain't doing. He better be everything that they saying he gonna be and more. He better want to ring his first fucking like rookie season. Magic Johnson style, because when he start getting all this criticism, when he's not performing well, I don't want nobody, you know, online to give him a break. He's a rookie. Nah, fuck that. Because he's talking like he's the, the best ever. Like he's Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Joe Montana. He's giving that type of energy right now. So if he's not executing at a very extreme high level quickly, oh, we giving him hell because of all of this. He's doing a lot right now. And every time I hear someone around, it's like, damn, it's just like, just, just have fun with the process, enjoy the process, do the necessary steps, 
get drafted and enjoy it. It's almost like he feels like he's bigger than, than the shield right now. And no player, no matter who you are, is bigger than the shield. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just, I'm going to stay away from him. Yeah, he's making me nervous. I'll say that. Like, I'm going to stay away from him. Like, that's just, that's just my thing. Like, that's just, like, I'm not, I just can't do it, dog. I'm, I'm not fucking with it. Like, I, I can't fuck with you. Like, I can't continue to fuck with you. That's just, it is what it is. You, it's always something. It's the nails. It's a fucking this. It's that. I can't do it. Like, I don't want to throw. My daddy wants this. I need this. I can't go to your team. Like, dog, when I, when is I want to know when the NFL is going to slap st- come in there and say, "Enough is enough." We're not even. We may not even draft your motherfucking ass. Like, I want to see somebody s- s- change. You could change it right now. You could change this shit right now. You can't do that. You can't say we not draft you. That's Why a not? team decision. <laughs> Why not? He ain't did nothing. He ain't did nothing that was illegal or nothing. He just, he just, hey, he has. You got personal choice. I don't want to get a physical. I don't want to throw. You don't have to go to the combine. Now, again, these are yeah, again, 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 that's that annoying. narrative you push. That's the narrative you push. We never said that. We all threw. Everybody threw. That was even a thought process, man. Now all of a sudden, you enabled motherfuckers have enabled these motherfuckers and entitled them so fucking high regard that they don't think they need to throw at a fucking combine now. And well, y'all agree with it. Y'all are okay with it. That's nah, the it's, just, cold it's part. different. That's the cold part. Y'all okay with that shit? Because it's no, different for each player. Just, like, bro, there are some times where it's like. This shit could just hurt you more than anything. Like you got your quarterback, you go. No, listen, listen. Hurt you quarterback, quarterback. You had a combine with with random wide receivers. Who you have yeah, no, no fucking I, like I you know, random wide receivers. Who you ain't got no experience. It doesn't with. matter. Or they timing, they the route running, or none out, of that shit. The ball comes out like the ball comes out. It don't matter who the fuck your receiver. Those guys just throw their pro day, JB. They no, throw their pro day. No, They'll save the combine. They'll go to their pro day with guys who they're comfortable with. Receivers who they've been throwing to all fucking year long because they already got a fucking. What does that have to do with anything? You're making excuses, dog. What is it? What does his receivers have to do with his fucking ball coming off his arm? JB, you tell me as a quarterback. No, for real, hold on. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. You tell me as a quarterback that. There's no relationship between quarterback and wide receiver when it comes it has to nothing timing, to do with a play, how, how they run their route, how they this like ain't a game. This ain't a game. I don't need him to catch my ball. Like, why are y'all defending this dude? Why is this a pretty prima donna contest? I don't need him to catch my balls in a fucking combine drill. But I want to show my feet work. I want to show I can throw every throw. I can throw dig, post corner, come back, deep out cut from opposite hash. Homie, why do I care if you drop every ball? The, the scouts in the film knows where the ball hit the fucking receiver. Like, why are you defending these dudes not competing? That's the problem I have. We are defending dudes that don't want to compete in the world today. I hear you, bro. I'm all about competition, but at the same time, there are instances where you got to just be fucking smart, is what I'm saying. Like, we, it's easy for us smart. to just sit back as fans and former players to sit back and say, just, no, it's fun, compete, just compete, just go, just go. I'm with you, yeah, but at the same time, there are instances, I'm not saying right now, Kelly Williams is going to probably be number one overall pick regardless of what happens. Like, he had to really, like, shit the bed at a very high level for him not to get drafted at number one or, like, well, number well, two. Well, right? well, but my point these- is, there are there have been instances in the previous year where it's like, it's probably smart for this quarterback to not run know. a 40. It's I, probably I smart to not do you, this, just, is what I'm saying. I just got to ask you, though. Who gave you guys, just generation, the right, A, to decide that you're better than everyone in the world that's come before you that's actually in the fucking Hall of Fame that actually went through and did everything I'm discussing right now and never made one excuse? When did y'all think you're better than everyone else? No one ever you, said they're better. It has nothing to do about being better. But when did you guys think you get a pass from like competing in a combine and a drill when fucking Marino, Aikman, Elway, Montana, Brady, when they all did it? Who the fuck is Caleb Williams, homie? Like, how does he think he don't fucking have to do it? I want to know when this thing became a real deal thing. Is Because I'm not going to blame Caleb Williams. It ain't him that started it. 
I'm saying, when did y'all decide, not you, that I'm talking to all these fuckers that decide to not compete and not go through the drills and not take this test and not do that. When did y'all think this was okay? And when did we start allowing this shit? That's what I want to know. I want to get to those grassroots because we would have never even considered not performing, throwing in front of a GM, a head coach, or et cetera. Never would have crossed our fucking minds. Now we got people defending it's okay. He don't have his receivers and he don't have a wide dog. It didn't matter. I never had my receivers. I was hitting motherfuckers in a webbing. It don't matter if they dropped it or not. It ain't on me. These cats know who can spin it and who can't. They're scared to compete because of some other bitch-ass fucking mental makeup. Period. It's some shit, and we've allowed it. I don't understand it. I don't so get you it. Tell me, you think these guys can go out there in an actual fucking college game in front of 80,000, 20,000, whatever the fan base is, Go out there, become a Heisman winner, play at the highest level on the biggest stage, but they're scared to go to a combine on air and throw the ball. That makes yeah, people that's why it counterintuitive. That's not that's the true, situation. Eh? It changed because, and I don't know the exact year when shit happened, so we'll have to do some research to find out. But the reason why motherfuckers change and adapt is because you learn after a while. And in previous years, motherfuckers have been harmed by their lack of performance at a combine. Maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they're better with pads on in, 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 in a game than they're on just with fucking tights on and a shirt, and they don't perform well in that type of setting. So they're – and motherfuckers of draft stock has literally went down because of the numbers they put up at a damn combine. So if if you're already projected to go, like, top whatever, top 15, top 20, whatever, it, as is, in some instances – it makes more sense to be like, you know what? I'm going to sit back because it's the unknown. These teams, are they look at the film, they like, this motherfucker fast as hell, motherfucker strong as hell, he, he motherfucker, he's explosive. We're going to drive him at this at this rate. Sometimes you can do this over a disservice by going to the combine and showing them how strong you really are or, or the lack thereof, showing them how fast you are or lack thereof. And now, instead of being drafted top 15, you know, first round, you get bumped and slide down to second round and you're you're missing out on like thousands of dollars. Like the, it's a huge, a huge we difference. Got, got, between I don't, the first I don't round in the second round and the third round. We're not talking about competition right now, JB. That's all you focus on. And trust me, I, I came on here and I had a, a a Smitty said so earlier this week talking about competition. So we are in agreement to that. I'm all about competing, but at the same time, JB, one one thing that I've learned in my my short uh, time here on this earth, thirty years, is that it's not all about hard work and, and being the, the hardest worker sometimes you gotta think smarter that's what i'm learning what i've learned over the years i've always been the guy that's gonna outwork you out compete you out this out that that takes you very far but at some point you gotta use this and players are using that now and your generation can't relate because all y'all did was whatever somebody told you to do you're gonna do it go go chop down that tree yes sir go to jump that house yes ma'am Go, go, go drown yourself. Okay. Whatever y'all was taught, y'all just did it and, and y'all didn't think through it at all. We learned from y'all mistakes and, and from the, and not mistakes, but just, just from just life and what happened. And we are moving accordingly because of that. The only right reason a player who does not compete in the combine is because they don't want to hurt their draft stock. That's what it is. Or they prefer for you to wait till pro day in a more controlled environment. In their backyard, you're gonna do the exact same drills anyway. Why do I gotta do it twice? That's what it is. Majority of the players, they still go out there and compete. JB, you see, like 90 some percent of guys who get elected to the combine goes out there and compete because it's more beneficial for them because of who they are, where they're projected, and the combine can also help you, but it can hurt you too, depending where you at. So it, it can't hurt you. <clears throat> you're missing the whole point. It never can hurt you. You are the human that you saw. We saw on film. By the way, all your points are absolutely pointless when it comes to competing and all the things you just mentioned. The reason I said what I said is, dog, they are missing the key moments of their careers. They don't even play in bowl games no more. What do you mean? 
They're not even playing in bowl games. That is starting the stack up. That starts the stack. I'm stacking it up, dog. I'm going to start packing my shit up. Now I don't want to go to the combine. Now I can't throw in shorts. Now I need my receivers. Like, it's mental. I want to see your mental makeup in a meeting in shorts, throwing the football when I throw something different at you. Like, there is a lot that goes to this. And when these guys don't compete and miss these things, I'm looking at the guys that go out and get drafted and how much they are a bust when they actually actually go out and play. Look at the last few that refuse to participate in drills in front of GMs and coaches and look at how fucking much of a bust they've been. Who looked? Go look at the cats that have missed major bowl games just so they can say, "Oh my, I don't want to hurt my draft stock." They're fucking bust in the league. It's a mental fortitude, dog. They don't have it no more. Why would I worry about throwing in shorts if I didn't have nothing to cover up? If I didn't have nothing to hide? Nah, there's more to it. There's a lot of mental fortitude. There's a lot of things I can sit down with you and I, Smitty, and talk about. One on one in a room that motherfuckers will freeze up over hearing certain things or talking about. I want to see that. I want to see you in in the NFL playoff game. I'm going to test your mental fortitude now in shorts. I see you play against fucking Tulane, Caleb Williams. By the way, you lost. And then the next year, you didn't play in a bowl game and your team won. What? Your team won and a backup white boy came in and threw for six touchdowns, a fucking ball record. <laughs> I want to see your motherfucking ass in person throw. Yes, I do. Especially if I take you first overall. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. I want to see you now. You think a Heisman Trophy winner is concerned about his backup having a great game? <laughs> I'm a Heisman Trophy winner, and you think I'm worried about my backup having a one great game in a meaningless bowl game? Yes, it's meaningless because that's the way the system is played now. Bowl games haven't mattered for a long time. And, again, no player is not about to go out there and fucking risk their injury like like fucking Jalen Smith did in Notre Dame and fuck up everything. Jalen Smith fucked his career up. This guy projected to be one of the top guys we've seen in a long time. Go watch the tape. Jalen Smith was phenomenal in college. Who? Phenomenal. He's have a he's had an average career. Who? Jalen Smith, Notre Dame linebacker. You're that's talking where, about that's one when it fucking really dude? From there, one dude? Said, You're playing. defending everybody because of one fucking scrub got hurt? No scrub. That's the Come on, scrub. Man. He was a beast. He was a beast. He's Everybody a not scrubs and salty and shit. He's he was a on no no, no, he What wasn't. is he doing now? That's, that's a lie. That's just a lie. I'm not gonna sit here and let you He's lie a on the scrub. Show. That's a You're lie. Watch the, the fucking whole thing. universe. That's what was a dog in college. You're he got nerve damage in his legs and fucked dude. his career up. You got one anomaly and you're defending the whole universe because one sense. scrub got it hurt. Makes sense. I'm not, and on top of that, I'm not playing no meaningless bowl game now. The bowl games don't fucking matter no more, JB. They don't. We don't even watch them. Man, you said play? you said you don't play? even watch bowl games, JB. You said it. You don't nobody watch, nobody cares nobody about play. them. If you're you not in the playoffs, play. they don't matter. If you're not in the playoffs, they don't, don't matter. Play no more. That's why nobody watches them. What do you mean? There's nobody playing. It's all y'all. You guys are the ones that said, oh, fuck it. I don't want to play. It's cool. And then y'all generation defended these motherfuckers. And we no one highlight the fucking teams that makes the playoff. That's why. We only highlight the teams that are in the playoff. That's all we care about. Just like in the NFL, all we care about is Super Bowls. You say you say this all the time. What has he done? What has Lamar done? What has Josh Allen done? What has your bro done? I mean, what do you mean? What have they done? They've been fucking phenomenal. Have they won a Super Bowl? Well, they ain't done shit. NBA. Well, what has he done? Has he won the NBA Finals? No, he hasn't. Well, he hasn't done shit. It's the same mentality that, that you have started, and now it's trickling down everywhere. College, well, did he even win a national championship? Did he make it to the playoffs? Well, what has he done? The players hear that from the media, from guys like you. They're like, well, shit, if it don't matter, why am I I'm about to put myself out there in a meaningless game? Because y'all said it don't matter. Well, if it don't matter, then it don't matter. Be consistent. Bailey, Man, Bailey, you, you, listen. It's one day, you have to step up. One day, y'all gonna have to say, you know what? We were wrong. We should have, we should have pushed these motherfuckers to compete every day and play. We fucked up college football. We fucked it up. College football is unwatchable. It's unbearable. About five years, you're gonna be saying that shit. Watch. You're gonna be saying that shit. I can't. I can't actually wait for it to happen. And I, I don't want to see the demise of college football, but it is happening. You a pessimist. And, you a pessimist. And, and, no, I'm, hell no, I'm an optimist. And I'm, I'm optimistically speaking how shitty this game has become. <laughs>
And it's y'all are fucking the ones pushing the narrative. It's the crazy part about it. All right, let's move on, Smitty. Uh, Raiders. Got commercial break, JB, real quick. JB, you scared as hell. Huh? It's time for a quick break, JB. We got to go take a piss. We got to pay these oh, bills. Yeah. Got to put water in the bottle, get a granola bar. I was just getting going, too. <laughs> well, I'm glad I finally woke your ass up. You was tired as hell this morning from trying to hang up a closet. You was on Big Smitty. I had to get your ass fired up for Fired Up Friday. Now we're here. Now we're live. And now our fans are in the chat and they entertain, man. Make sure y'all don't go nowhere. Go take a piss break, man. Go go get you a banana hey, Josh, and orange. I agree, right back. I agree with you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. I don't care. Whatever I say is a fact. Hey, that's why, hey, that's why Smitty don't care. TikTok will be back. You illiterate fucks. I'll be back. We'll be back. Bailey, take us away. Here, this is the infamous one of the palm trees that Ash ate. So I can't fucking believe you. See this fucking belt? You see this? Who just eats a whole fucking palm tree, man? You guys are fucking shit. This fucking unearthly motherfucker. Ate the whole fucking thing. Like, who eats a whole fucking palm tree? Like, you fucking shit me? Are you fucking shit me? No shit now. Who did? I'm gonna look at the fucking camera. Who fucking did? Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit down. Now, do we understand each other? Excuse me. There is no more fucking up palm trees. I'm tired of spending all this money, and now I've created a whole fucking barricade for you. So I don't want to have to dig this bitch out. I'm fucking dead. I'm old. My back hurts. I'm fucking stiff as a porn dick. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Boy, if you don't sit your ass down. Now, you come over here with me. Come on. Here's what I had to do to fucking stop you. And I got a, a better, beautiful, bigger tree. So now we are shitting in tall grass. Replanted it, bitch. Soiled it up. Put a little trellis in here. Put a bunch of fucking stones. Look like Stonehenge around this bitch. And now, Ash, are you going to fucking try to dig this bitch out? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do this again? So I had to ask, remember this? Remember you ate this? Did you do this? He ate one, so I put this little moat around it. And uh, just a sitting area. Come over here, we got the plastic basketball court and driving range. So if I ever want to pull out the big dog, that's our net. All we do is just slap down our driving range, you know. Bam, swing away. And that's where we swing into the net. Then we crack corn on this hoop. And here's my RV parking where I park the whips. Let's take you out and show you a few. Out these devil gates, I'll show you a few cars. Come on out. So right here, of course, is the bad boy. The last custom, last year they made this Cadillac. EXT, one of a kind. Can't find these anywhere. Um, and then you come out here, we got the 650i, BMW, rag top, 500 to the rear, white interior. You know, you can't beat it. This is my baby though, my truck. Full sound, custom sound system in both. Top notch, only as I do. And Obviously, this is my crib. Oops. All right, that's JB's Cribs. Appreciate you jumping by, coming by. Listen, time to go. Now take your asses and get the hell out of here. I'm about to go cook some slap thick tri-tips. Been a pleasure, now go home, peace.
to look down on the property. That'll do it. Real close JB's. JB's Cribs. Peace. What up, what up? Woo! What's going on, chat? What's going on, y'all, man? JB Tank here some business right now. He'll be back here shortly. But we are back. Y'all know me. I'm always going to eat some. I got me a chocolate chip chewy granola bar. Shout out to Sunbelt Bakery. Can y'all see this? My camera all week. Can y'all see this? Pretty damn good, y'all. Listen, I, I'm an eater. I like to eat, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to do, you know what I mean? I wake up, I'm hungry. Middle of the day, I'm hungry. I go to sleep, I'm hungry. That's what it is, man. AC said, quit smacking your food. You know, my wife tell me that all the time. But smacking just makes the food taste better. Like, when you eating something that's good, you can't help it. Like, for example, I go to Robex every single week, probably a couple times a week. It's a smoothie shop out here in uh, L.A. And that Robex smoothie... I get a big Wednesday. It's one of the best smoothies I've ever... Matter of fact, it's not one of. It's the best smoothie I've ever had in my entire life, by far. Now, it's not all the way healthy. It has a couple scoops of sherbet in there, but it's like, it's fruit and then sherbet. So it's like orange, pineapple, um, papaya juice, scoop of orange sherbet, scoop of pineapple sherbet, and then something else healthy. They blend it together. And it's the best smoothie you ever have in your entire life. Smacking your lips, lips, smack lips every single black time. people shit. Smacking your lips, black people shit. White people, well, y'all lips are so thin, y'all can't really smack. Like y'all try to smack, it just don't make no noise. You just, you, you, like, you just, it, you just like. It, I don't know if it's stereotypical. What what the word is is racist. R a c c i s s s. I don't know, but it's definitely black people shit. Smacking their lips, it's hood. It's inner city. It's ghetto. We can say all we want to say. That's what it is. Like, white people don't do that shit. I hear you, man. I hear you, man. But we back right now. We live, man. We got about 600 people in the chat right now. Before we move on to our next topic, though, JB, uh, Kayla Williams actually came out, I guess, and made a statement of why he's not doing the medical examination. He said, there's not 32 teams that can draft me. There's only one of me. So this is his answer, basically, on his decision not to, to do the medical test. He's basically saying that he'll only do the medical testing for the teams that he decides to talk to, the teams that he decides to talk to. So. Go ahead no. and defend that one. I ain't defend that. My defense wasn't of Kayla Williams. My defense was of the. My defense wasn't of Kayla Williams. Y'all missed my whole point. My my defense was the fucking situation system, system in play. Why don't you understand? Make federal players not to do certain things. You're too smart. I'm. I refuse to. Re I refuse to believe that I'm you're. Dumb. You're too smart. To not understand. This is what happens when you give an inch, they take a yard. You don't understand, dog. You gotta nip something in the butt sooner or later. And this motherfucker don't think he runs the world. This guy thinks he is that guy. He's not the guy. He's another guy entering the draft. He's not the guy. He hasn't fucking busted a grape in a fruit fight yet. And we're and he's gonna pick and choose who he wants to go. By the way, the last time I checked, 32 teams are available when it comes down to you getting cut or traded after your first contract comes up, homeboy. But your daddy not fucking smart enough to let you know that shit because you're depending on a motherfucker to tell you something that he's never done. It blows my mind. And we're in the media out here defending this motherfucker. Like, get the fuck. Jeremy, let me ask you this, though. If I was those other 31 teams that don't draft them, by the way, though, not to cut you off, 31 teams that don't draft them, and, I, and I'm sitting there, I'm going to remember that. In about fucking three years when you get cut. <laughs> Let me ask you this, JB. We've been on this show basically saying, like, he ain't got no choice but to go out there and ball out because of all the demands he's making and all this, that, and the third. And we, we've kind of both been leaning on the side of we doubt he's going to play at that high of a level. 
let's say though, just for shits and giggles, what if he does go out there and like ball the fuck out? You know, what I mean, ha- has an amazing rookie year, CJ Stroud type level rookie of the year, and like d- does, and he's like on pace to be, or you know, projected to be what people have said they claim he's going to be. Will we look back at all this and, and have an issue with it, or will we just be like, well, I guess he shut us up, like? I have, I haven't seen it yet though. Let's just let's just talk statistically speaking. Let's just talk statistics, which all the young folks out here want to do. You're analytical cr- m- uh, number crunchers. Let's just talk about it. Tell me a guy that's been in this demand of demand like this, basketball, football, you name it. Let me know that has gone out and shut up everybody from talking. I I want to know, guy. Would you say Elway? Didn't Elway demand no. like um? No, he did everything though. He balled all his years in college. He 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 demanded that he didn't want to go to. He wanted a trade. He didn't want to go to a certain team. Right. He did not say I'm not working out for you. He didn't say I'm not going to take a fucking medical test. He didn't say I'm too good for you. He said so did Eli Manning. By the way, right. say I don't want to go there. I want to go to New York. I don't want to go to the Chargers. Whatever. I mean, there's rumors out there that Peyton Manning said he didn't want to go to certain teams. People always want to say he didn't want to go to certain teams, but they worked out. They did all the shit. They impressed the other 32 teams in this profession that are employers, future employers. By the way, every single team in the NFL is a future employer, Caleb Williams. Just FYI. And these owners are in a good old boy network. And if you don't think Jerry Jones get on the phone... With fucking whoever, just just using a name that maybe drafts you. Not the Cowboys ain't going to draft you, but I'm just saying. Calls and says, oh, man, this motherfucker wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. Come on, man. Cats are getting blackballed every day. Like, don't think it ain't real. It's a real thing. 32 employers are out there, Caleb Williams, and you're going to shine them? You're going to shun 31 of them? We'll see. Can't wait for that breakdown, but we're going to go. Let's talk about some drama. Patriots interested in Joe Flacco. You got, there's a few quarterback things in there. You got Joe Flacco to the Patriots rumors. You got Kirk Cousins to the Falcons being rumored. And what does that do to the Justin Fields Chicago Bears, Atlanta Falcons, whatever it may be. I'm curious where all this goes. And then you got Boomer Esiason saying that Ryan Pohl should be fired if Caleb Williams isn't taken. Again, enabler. We got a guy who's we're talking about on this show, the realest show on planet Earth, talking about a guy that I wouldn't take. You're talking about this same guy about he not working out and it's not a big deal. And then Boomer Esiason saying to the Bears organization, you better draft this guy. And this guy has a platform. So, like, it's all over the place. I'm just I'm just telling you, I, I don't know. I've never seen nothing like it, dog. But it's really throwing a monkey wrench in this whole thing. I'm trying to figure out who takes – where does Caleb go? And it doesn't affect Justin Fields. I, I, number one thing is Justin Fields – Going or staying is the number one puzzle piece to this whole thing. Like, if Justin stays in Chicago, then you have a problem, Houston. If he don't stay in Chicago, huh, opens up Pandora's box. I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I rather, I wish, I wish Justin would stay in Chicago and let them build around a guy and give him at least a fair shot at it. I don't know. We, we beat a dead horse on the Chicago thing. It just makes zero sense to go get a rookie, especially with a roster that's shit. Like, you're starting all over doing exactly the same thing you did three years ago when you drafted Justin Fields. <laughs> it doesn't make zero sense, though, because you got to think of from a standpoint, too, like the 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 Bears kind of been down this road a little bit, right? They had an opportunity. They could have drafted Patrick Mahomes, you know, but instead they drafted, I think, Mitch Trubisky, you know, so they, they, they you know, they, they look back at a situation they've never had a like crazy amazing quarterback like that's always been a position that they've lacked at for the majority of their franchise's history they're great on the defensive side finding great you know legendary defenders uh finding weapons but the quarterback position is what they, they've always always lacked and now you got opportunity to 
drab what people are saying is a generational talent. Whether you and I believe it or not, that's one thing. That doesn't mean it's not true. I'm wrong a lot about a lot of shit. So he might go out here and be everything that they say he's going to be, and he might prove us all wrong and shut us all up. So it's like, in the event that he is that, or he's even close to that, and the Bears miss out on that for Justin Fields, and Justin Fields ends up just, you know, winning seven games again or eight games again, it's like their that whole entire front office is getting let go. So it's just a huge risk from that standpoint. The safe, the, if, if you're worried about job security, the safe move is to draft Caleb because that buys you like an extra year or two. Because it's like, all right, he's a rookie. We're going to give him a little bit of time, but, you know, whatever, whatever. But if you don't draft him, I think Justin Fields has to ball out next season. Like, it can't be no, like, uh, he's showing sign. Nah, Justin Fields got to be, you know, 30-something touchdowns, seven picks. They got to go to playoffs, win 12 games. They got to I mean, show that was worth If you look at his stats, his stats aren't even too far removed from Lamar Jackson MVP stats. His stats are very com- comparable, number one. Number two, he won five out of his last eight games. Right. You got to keep it going, though. He does every year, though. I like Justin Fields. The year before that, it's like the whole fucking first half of the season, shitty. He starts to get going late in the season, and then, like, it it leaves us in this position right now where it's like, damn, he did show flashes. He did win some games. He did play big in certain moments. But what about the first fucking 12 games? Like, that don't matter. The first 10 games or whatever. Like, that don't matter. I got to watch the entirety of the season. It's about what did you do to me in totality, you know? Well, you can't. See, that's why I don't agree with two things can be true statement that you make so often. Like, this team is shit. This roster is shit. So, two things aren't true. They're a horrible roster with zero outside talent besides DJ Moore, no O-line, or no run game, defense is abysmal, and... This guy's gone through three offensive coordinators and two head coaches in three years. So it's not two things can be true. They're a shitty organization since 1985. Ask Brian Erlacher. Tank Johnson and Brian went to a Super Bowl. <coughs> they lost to your Colts. And that's really the last time they've been relevant. So I'm confused because... Their defense was, first of all, like... Their team not as bad as what you're saying, though. Like, I mean, they're not as bad as what I mean, they're saying. They, they, they defense was top twelve, almost. You know, damn near top ten defense. They defense got Herbert at running back. They got Darnell Mooney. They became a top the twelve defense. defense. Three over three. They got some cats. They, they're not like just shitty. Like you're, okay, I'm not. But no NFL team is. But in the last ten games, they became a top twelve defense. Last ten games. Okay, so their defense gelled. So if their defense became better from a bottom to a top 12 defense, so what's the difference in Justin Fields getting better in the last eight games? That's what happens. It's called matriculation. They have to they have to figure shit out. This guy has zero wideouts. DJ Moore, if he gets double teamed, who does he go to? Well, maybe he figured it out week fucking 11. Like, that's a real thing. It happens. That's why I was optimistic about Justin Fields and saying, give you him. See what I'm saying? Listen, I'm, I like him too, but the same thing you're saying now, we had the same conversation going into last season and it was the same bad season. All right, he, this, this is what he has shown. He, Hold on, he gets no. going Ask and then yourself, he, what did the Bears do to improve the roster to help him though? They got they DJ got, Moore. They got, they got some. They got they DJ Moore. I mean, they, they got some guys, huh? That's shit. They got DJ Moore. But, it's not like I they mean, went that, out it's a 1,300 yard plus receiver. DJ Moore All was a big dude. Yeah, but that doesn't help a quarterback that's young learning how to become a guy in the pocket. One guy doesn't help you because when they start fire zoning you and double and combo coverage in you and bracketing you, where do you go with the ball? And you can see him hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Their O-line is atrocious. That's why Justin Fields is running around back there more than any other quarterback. And he can, rightfully so. He's a freak of nature, but it ain't going to last long. Look at Lamar's career. If you look at him from early three, four years to now, entering year seven, eight, he's not as fast as he was. He's more banged up than he was. You can't keep running around at the position because there's a wide receiver wide open while you run around. Plus, you're going to get hit. You're going to take a shot. You're going to get a hamstring. You're going to get an Achilles. You're going to get a calf strain. This is, But the ball could have been gone in the pocket, and it, it would have been a lot easier to get rid of the ball on time and not have to deal with this ad libbing. Um, I'm just saying. I think Chicago has a lot of holes. They could. They, they're okay with the. Every NFL team has NFL players. 
contrary to some guys in here chat's belief. But guess what? I'd rather start. I'd rather go with what I know instead of fucking rec- go get a fucking rookie freshman in the NFL. I'm not starting over. That's just me. Uh, let's dive into this uh, McCole Hardman situation. Ooh, spicy. I know. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel. I'll let you go first on this one. I don't know how you feel on this. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I'll jump. I mean, it's been a lot of noise going back and forth, man. You know, some chess players are believing that Mikko, uh, Mikko Hardman gave away, like, the offensive game plan against, you know, I guess uh, to the Eagles and to the Chiefs because he was mad that he wasn't really playing a lot. Hardman was also on, I think, the Pivot podcast, basically talking about how the, the Jets just – the, the reason why they had so many flaws saying it was really no true system and it was like Aaron's way basically. And, um, and, and that, and that was it. And that's why they were losing. He was trying to educate them on, you know, him coming from the chiefs and having Super Bowl experience. He was trying to speak out on telling them, you know, this is wrong. This is how you should do it. And my brothers was like, they just wasn't li- listen to him allegedly. So been a lot of back and forth right now on both sides. It's tough, man. Cause like, the Jets got beef with everybody, it seems like. They do. They do, man. It's like if everybody's coming at you, then it, it, I feel like it got to be some truth to it at some point. You know, some it's a, what's the common denominator? It's the Jets. But, I mean, McCall Harmon, he's on a podcast. He gets asked a question, so he answers the question. So it's like I can't be mad at you for answering the question. But at the same time, though, I understand that, like, in that locker room, you know, that's supposed to be like your, like your, your safe space and a certain shit that you kind of want to keep in house and um he just kind of he's just throwing out all the skeletons that's going on and, and basically dissing the jets because he didn't have a good experience there i bet if he had a good experience there he wouldn't be saying that he wouldn't be talking crazy he, you know like even if they lost games but he played a lot and he got a you know what i mean he had his numbers he probably would answer that question a little differently and, ask, and answer a little bit more softly but since he had a bad experience he's he's loose with the lips right now so i, I don't loose lips man sink hips i don't know where when this came again, when this became a thing, like I'm really right. confused. This guy is a nobody. Three, three Super Bowl rings, and he made the game three with a touchdown, oh, made so, plays. So does the punter and the kicker. No, but he, I mean, Harbin makes like a couple plays. Like he, he's a not a star plays. by no means. A he couple ain't plays on the bench. Like he's a he's, a, he's, he's a weapon. He's, he's a not weapon. a guy. He's not the guy. Stop. Don't even try to sell me that McCall Hardman has done any fucking thing. He's not the guy. He's not he'll the never guy, be. but like he'll he, never be the guy, dog. He he's never. Ha- no, I'm, I'm agreeing, but at the same he time, I'm not serious. Say he hasn't done anything. Yeah, but he's not. He's a nobody. He's a role player. It's like it's like. All right, cool. He's not even close to your comparison of a big shot Robert Ori, who's actually won games as a role player. This guy's a nobody. For him to come out on a show and say, "I know how to win. I'm a winner." Is absolutely cringe vibe, secondhand embarrassment. I was laughing and embarrassed at the same time. You're a fucking nobody. You catch a bubble screen when you're allowed to in the system. Shut the fuck up. You are a victim of success and don't tell me anything else. A victim of success. Let that sink in. You aren't the fucking reason for success. You're not the catalyst of success. You're a nobody who's now making noise because you left a system to go back to a place you already were at and won another Super Bowl. Coincidentally, stop it. I can't. I'm so sick of these bottom feeders who are rostered and win a Super Bowl who think they're the reason. It ain't you're not the reason, dog. I'm sorry. And guess what? Everyone knows that Aaron Rodgers runs the offense. Smitty and I have been talking about how bad the offensive coordinator is for how long and why he got ran out of Denver as a head coach. We already know this, McCall Hardman. We already knew this shit. So I'm just trying to throw that out there. Like, let's not make like this is breaking news that we didn't already know who the OC is in in New York. (laughs) He cried his way out of hard situations. Again, what the generation has become, just as the the running back did the same thing late in the season, he gets to go to a playoff team. Cook goes from the fucking Jets to the Ravens. (laughs) 
I'm, I'm just saying, this is what we've become. We're accustomed to getting out of hard situations and going over to easier roads, less traveled. This is what this generation wants. This is what these cats want. I have zero respect for this shit. I would have I would have rather have him said, you know what? I love my time there. This is what used to happen. And then in the and, and me and you talking like homies later on drinking, man, fucking New York's a fucked up spot, dog. It ain't on a podcast, though. It's between me and you, real shit. That's what's we lost real shit. Like we we'll go on a podcast and air dirty laundry like a bitch. That's what we do now. And you're a nobody. You're a nobody. And I like McCall Hardman. I think he's a great little role player. But you're a nobody. But hold on, bro. How can you say two so hold on? On on one end, you say I like him, he's a great role player, but then on the other end, he says he's a nobody. Why like, those are two extremes. He's not he's not a fucking star, it's but a nobody is like a exactly guy who's on the practice though. squad who don't really do too much. Who, he actually played. It's the reason why the Chiefs went and got his ass. It's they actually needed a fucking true, weapon. The Chiefs were struggling offensively. He helped them. He helped them in situations, extend drives, and, and get going. And it's actually the true, though, Smitty. Like, you can be you a nobody. Like, role, role players matter. You can be a nobody, and I like you. Most of your most of your team is role players. Like, you know that, right? It's, it's no, not a lot of stars, then, JB. And you don't talk about you're the reason. I'm a winner. I'm a three time champion. I, I, so are the that. so are the fucking kickers and the snapper and the holder, homie. You did exactly what they did. By the way, they had to kick a field goal to win. They went to overtime. They needed the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. They were more important than you, McCole Hardman, in that game, by the way. So stop and miss me with you're so relevant and important. You're not. I, I'm telling you, I, he's a nobody. Tyreek Hill came out. At least he's warranted. Yeah, I, 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 I did. You know, fuck, okay, you're not arguing that. Kelsey or fuck, come on, McCole Hardman. You were fucking shopped around. You're irrelevant. Shop, by the way, legitimate dudes like that and receivers and big time players that are contributors, they don't get sh- traded twice in the regular season. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, hey, Toyo, hey, JB cooking right now. When he cooking, sometimes you gotta sit back and let him cook. Like when he in the zone, I gotta sit back and let him do his thing, man. I can't disagree with you on that, man. Like, I don't think he's a nobody, but I do feel you like he ain't good enough to be talking about shit like this. He can't, you can't be out here talking about. This is how you win, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> this is how you win. That's the crazy part. I'm like, <laughs> you telling Ryan Clark this how you win. Um, <laughs> all right, Saquon Barkley. I, I think he's a huge get if he's to the right team. Now, again, he's going to want big money. I don't know if I'd pay him big money. I think the best fit for him is obviously the common sense one that everyone's talking about, going to the Chargers and Harbaugh. Meaning they probably can't keep Eckler and him uh, and attain him. But at the same time, um, CJ Stroud and him are purportedly really tight. So Mm. curious to see how Saquon Barkley and the Houston Texans um, create some steam. That I like the Houston Texans and Singletary right now. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. <clears throat> As a Colts fan, I do not want Saquon Barkley joining the Texans in the AFC South because they already trending up. CJ Stroud is a bad man. They're only going to get better. You got yeah, you fucking Singletary. You got your guy. Who's your player that got hurt at the end of the season? A beast, a receiver? Tank Dell. Tank Dell. You bring on fucking Saquon. Don't do that. Do not do that, Saquon. Come to L.A. or go to Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Stick with your first. Stick with your gut. Go with one of your first options. Do not come to the AFC South. Leave that alone. My coach is working right now. AR5 is healthy. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is healthy. I need my coach to be, to be right there at the top of the AFC South. And Saquon Barkley joining the Texans just makes me nervous. It don't make me scared. It makes me nervous because I do think that would be an extremely good fit. I think he uh, fits in seamlessly. You know, he's never had – Saquon's never had a quarterback of that level, you know what I'm saying, since he's been in the NFL. And imagine how much just playing alongside a great quarterback like that will help his game, make his game e- easier. 
Because now defense don't know what to do. They don't know if you're going to run, throw. The play action is a real thing. It changes everything. So I actually like that fit a lot, but I hope it doesn't happen. Hey, shout out to Coach Yo, my main girl, the head coach, Ole Miss, been on the coach show. Yo, yo. Uh, talking to her right now, actually. Uh, she's going to come on the show next week. Uh, she gets ready for March Madness. She's going to pop on our, on our show with us. Uh, she got her 100th victory at Ole Miss. That's a, that's a feat in itself in the Clap SEC. Yeah, clap it up for her, Coach Yo. She uh, she gave us one of our most epic, raw, and uncut interviews of all time on the show. She came on in the plane. She was on the plane as they just beat, I believe they beat Stanford and was headed to the Elite Eight um, or the Sweet 16. I forgot. And uh, she jumps on the show right out the uh, right out the jet with the with the team, and did about a twenty minute deal with us. And uh, she's a she's a real one. She'll be on the show next week. Coach Joe will. Um, we're trying to get Merrill Hodge on the show next week. Um, don't don't just don't do hey don't just name hey let, let's surprise them let, let's surprise yeah. the folks. We got some, we got some uh let's surprise the folks JB. I just pop up with them. You know what I mean? Got some folks on next week. We also got uh. Uh, what's her name? She, we got Scarlett Johnson. She's coming on. If you don't know who that is, uh, she's really one of the biggest advocates with uh, Riley Gaines uh, in the whole boys playing against girls in sports. She's a big, big name. Um, she's gonna come on and talk about that. So we're gonna, we're gonna change it up. We're gonna talk, not just talk sports on this show. We can talk about real life shit. So pound the like, subscribe, become a member if you're not one. Um, I don't know, Smitty. Saquon is, is still, though, an aging commodity. I, I don't know how much money I can give him. I, I'm keep it real. Um, Short-term deal. I think you give him like a, th- a two, three-year max deal. And, you know, the goal is to win now. We talk about that all the time on this show, JB. Teams are trying to win now. The teams who have actually done it and executed uh, executed that have won. The Bucks did it. They got Brady and Gronk and Antonio Brown and all these guys on, on one year. They won. The Rams did it, obviously, with Matthew Stafford, OBJ, Von Miller. They won. So, right now, it's not about – they're not worried about long-term. I think it's short-term. How can we win now, right now, today? And I think Saquon, the short-term, could be a huge benefit. Yeah. Um, I want to show you this video of Shiloh at practice at Colorado. Have you seen this? I've not seen it. I actually love it. I love this clip. I love this clip because I, I've been in the locker room too long, and I've been in the I've been in the off season workout stuff like that. You have these moments, and JV, don't come on here and and don't, I don't know what you're about to say yet, but don't come on here and lie and say you ain't had mo- every off season. There's a moment or moments multiple when it's the middle of the off season, motherfuckers out of shape, and you're trying to and you're trying to show discipline. You're trying to, and sometimes cats are doing shit the right way. I honestly, but as a coach, you're trying to trigger some emotions. You're trying to make it tough on these players on purpose to see how they react and respond. You know what I'm saying? There's multiple situations. So this happens. That 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 clip, I'm actually that makes me actually more excited, more of a believer in what Colorado's gonna do this season. I like the fact that that Dion yelled at his son and told him to go to the end zone for messing up the drill. I'm glad that they're calling Shiloh out. They're not showing the favoritism that everybody assume and claim that they are. They're calling guys out no matter what their name is. They're uh, they're they're setting up this team to be a disciplined team, 
Focus on the little things. Little things. I blow the whistle, you turn. If you do it wrong, if you're slow, if you're lagging, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. You know what I'm saying? All is one and one is all. I don't care if 99 of the players is doing it the right way. If one of y'all is messing up, we all starting back over. That's football. We did the same thing. You know, me as a, a former, you know, as a captain, you know, we had spring teams where, you know, doing our morning workouts. And if one person on, on my team missed the class, missed breakfast check, lacked, we all getting Don Patrol. And the real the real ones know what Don Patrol is if you play college football because most of the guys I know that play different schools have their own variations and versions of Don Patrol. I mean, I'm getting up at 5.30 fucking in the morning and I'm doing some type of punishment that's that's going to be brutal. And that, very, and, that, and that could vary. But my point is, all is one, one is all. We are a team. We are a unit. So me seeing that clip, I actually like that. I have a chapter in my book, number one bestseller, <clears throat> Hate Me Now, Love Me Later. It is called <clears throat> Slap Dicks, Fuck Sticks, and Shit Birds. I have another chapter in my book. It's called Every Day is an Interview. Somebody's always watching you. Every Day is an Interview. Two very critical chapters in my bestseller, Hate Me Now, Love Me Later. I saw both of those things in that clip. I saw a slap dick, I saw a fuck stick, and I saw a shit bird. And then I saw every day's an interview. Somebody's always watching you. First of all, let's talk about Dion, so-called everyone in the chat, ripping his son. If that's an ass ripping, then fuck, I'm the devil, number one. Number two... I don't know if you realize, but the kid ran out of the end zone, which he never got to, which was directed by the head coach and his father to do so. He never got to the end zone. He immediately turned around and ran back into the drill. So let's not over-exaggerate the great disciplinarian in Coach Prime. Because <laughs> you should either allow it or you coach it. And that sure don't look like he's in the fucking end zone to me. So... Anyway, you coach it or allow it. That's a mockery. This is a joke. Um, what were they doing? I mean, is this fucking Pop Warner? Is this youth fucking football? What are we doing? And to Smitty's point, I do agree with. We do little shit like this to get attention to players and make sure we do finite detailed work. We do certain things like that. But that drill, that drill, though, is not one of them. I, there's a lot of other things. That's I do, cool. I, Everybody got to do the same drill. Maybe that maybe that wasn't your drill. That's cool, JB. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I do oh, prongs yeah. for that. There's I do more ways to coach other than JB's plays. There's literally nothing that could happen in that drill. This is just, just telling you, professionally speaking, there's nothing in that drill that got that team better that day. They actually got worse. They actually got worse because the kid didn't listen to direction. He ran out of the end zone. Denver went to the end zone, came back, made the team and the dad and the coach look even better worse because he didn't listen to the dad and then and then and, and people want to talk about hypocrisy at the finest we didn't see last chance you spelt wrong by the way but anyway let's be clear i have juco players i'm molding them to go to this level you fucking idiots they are the same kids though jb at the end of the day like no, these they're not. guys ain't some like they're not the same like, kids they are the same 18 they're 19 20 year old guys kids. juco guys came and played with me so like i, I played with you guys one of my best Paul, friends Paul, played a fucking juco, juco. like we just rewind rewind your life of dudes. no rewind your life tell me the difference between a kid that went to ball state with you right out of high school and a juco transfer stop playing tell me go ahead right now i want to wait tell me how they're the same kid what you mean? I'm saying we all the same kids. The motherfucker fucked up in high school in some way. They fucked the grades up. Like, or, or, like typically that's what it was. Like, I don't like what we talking about. You just said they're the same kid. No, they're not. They're not even close. Hey, I said, explain to me a kid that goes from high school to Ball State. Ain't meant to explain. Yeah, like these, these are the same know. type of like he's the same type of kid. Might be a little bit of a knucklehead. Might have gotten into some trouble. Might have. 
Gray's money got bad. That's that's the same. I got D one guys straight from high school to, to Ball State who did the same type of shit. But maybe they 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 were able to sneak their way in, get past it. Like I, I I've seen both sides. I'm not like, saying I, as far as like. DNA. I'm talking about oh, when okay. you say the same kid. No, they're not. Juco is not the same. Juco players travel a completely different road. Now, are they fuck ups? Yeah, there's a reason why they're in Juco first. But a kid that goes straight D1 then gets kicked out and I have to take them back into Juco and then send them back to D1. We call that a 424 rule. That's a completely another different animal. There's three types of different animals in this business. There's a qualifier out of high school. There's a fuck up, whether it was weed, credit cards, drama, kicked out of grades, whatever, goes back to JUCO. And then there's just a kid that didn't play enough and said, I want to go play somewhere. And I leave the four year to go JUCO to play like Jonathan Banks did for me, Alan, a few other guys, go back D1 to a different D1 and start like Jonathan did at Tulane. So those are the three kids. There is no other kid. There is no other kid. Well, coach, uh, no, there's no other kid. You fuck up at a D1. You you went there out of high school, qualified academically, so you're smart enough to make it. You fucked up, become, meaning you were the follower, not the leader. I took you. I remolded you and sent you back to a four-year school. You either shit or get off the pot. You fucking figured it out. Or you come from the mud, you're shitty, you had a bad background, you couldn't graduate, you didn't take school seriously, then you go JUCO right out of high school. There's two completely different animals right there, two completely different ones. And this team gives me cringe vibes when all we show is this type of stuff you just saw, behavior, and we go defend it and say, that's great job, Dion, disciplining him. He didn't discipline you. He's fucking just, laughing at you. I just, think, we, at I just you. think every fucking thing laughing, Colorado is really overblown. Every on, no. single thing they do, good or bad, we overblow. This is we nothing, baby. Why, why we acting like we can't sit here and like we ain't been on no fucking football field in the locker room? This type of shit happens I all the all time, that. baby. I get all that. Players fuck up. We we yell out and they get kicked out of practice. Come on, JB. Let's let's, 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 let's stop. Like we, we overreacting right now, this man. Come on now. This, but Smitty, you asked for this. I didn't. I didn't break. I did not say film my every move and go three and fucking 11 or whatever the record was. I did not say this. You all said it. So don't say, yo, we, they, we're overblowing it. No, we're not. Y'all asked for this. You had everyone on the sideline hyping up this organization. You are either a failure or you're going to make it. There ain't no fucking we asked for this. We overblown it. You asked for it, homie. Step up. You're the man. Go be the man. You want to film everything. You want to go to Paris. You want to miss spring ball. Then go ahead. Film it. But don't talk about you're sad now when we bring it up and show you an actual blue shit show and a mockery that's happening, and you're mad now that we're blowing it up and talking about it. Nah, homie. It go both ways. You're right. They asked for the camera. What you, asked you, and for I, you and I as football guys. We we are smart enough to have enough experience to look at that clip and not overreact and be like, oh shit, this is a fucking shit show. They're gonna be a, have a shitty season. There's no discipline. Shallow doesn't like come on, bro. Nah, because I'm not we ain't gonna go there because I didn't I didn't play too much football. I didn't been in too many locker rooms. I didn't been in the position where, I, where my teammates fucking up. Now, come on, Darius. Come on, uh 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 Anthony, come on, man. Do it again. So and so didn't do it. Do it again. Come on, we this is happens every Fucking all season, and if you and you're in the chat, if you did not play football for a high fucking level, I don't don't say shit. Just listen and learn, because you ain't had the experience that I had or that JB had. So just shut up and listen. I'm telling you, this moment happens every single all season, multiple times, either because players are just fucking up mentally and coaches trying to get them to fire them up, or sometimes you're not even fucking up. And the coach is going into this shit like, hey, I'm about to fuck with them today. Just because they're trying to get us to learn how to react and see how we we respond when you got to start over or when it's a, a change and change in possession or whatever the case may be. These moments are what can help you bring a team and mold a team together. 
that this happens every single so that's that's all I'm saying. You're right. They ask for the cameras. So when the cameras come, you're gonna get praised and you're gonna get criticized. But there's certain shit I'm not gonna come in here and just criticize because that don't this this moment did, did not teach us that much. This moment does not show that they're not disciplined. This moment does not show that the coaching is bad or that Shiloh's a shitty player. It doesn't it doesn't show nothing. And we've we've got too much experience on this show to go on this fucking on this on this live here today on free game Friday, Friday or Friday, and act like this clip is so fucking bad when we've both been in any either as a player and or a coach have experienced a very similar scenario multiple times. That's all I'm saying. Well, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Don't start none, won't be none. I surely wouldn't be filming all my everyday moves and I'd be this shitty. <laughs> I'd be quiet and humble as a motherfucker. But that's just me. Um, you went quiet and humble on Last Chance You? I, what do you mean? I was the same person I've always been. I know, which ain't quiet and humble. Like, I mean, you you fucking confident and you you boisterous. You go, yeah, you I'm just coaching. Like, I'm just coaching. I was just coaching. I know, but that's you, though. That's what I'm saying. I didn't give a fuck about no cameras on me. We weren't filming it for our own use, though. Imagine Last Chance You and I did a whole thing. Like, let me ask you. So if I coached again right now, if I coached again right now, I would do we film because of, of my because of my following and my platform. Yeah. I would do the Dion shit, but it would be a completely different Dion shit. It would be a completely different filming thing. But here's my point to you: Imagine me filming everything, so you got to see it prior to Netflix airing. That is the huge difference in this. Well, they don't so have a Netflix see. deal, so they they, yeah. they creating their own Netflix. They're but you're seeing you're seeing it all right, and then the main thing, which would be for me, relatively speaking, Netflix coming out in July, and then you see the actual documentation and documentary and everything, and then you're like, "Fuck, he filmed all that shit to go two and eight. He we've been seeing this fucking fire ass social media shit. They were two and eight. Or you see all this shit, and then you win the natty, and you get your first bowl victory in school history and all that shit. And then it's like, all right, it's fucking – it, it, it makes sense. There's two parts. There's only there's only two ways it could go, Smitty. There ain't another – there ain't no gray area. It's either you're going to show all that shit and win, you're going to show all that shit and get your ass whooped and look like a fool. It is what it is. You got to be able to – you got to be willing to take it on. My point is, if you're going to be willing to take it on – Got to be willing to take the fucking heat. And that heat comes from everyone, from us, to everyone in the media, either whether you defend it or you fucking criticize it. Correction ain't criticism, dog. I'm just telling you. It is what it is. People get butt hurt. Don't ask for it. We wouldn't cover it. We wouldn't cover it. Nah, I'm just telling you. So I don't feel sorry. I don't feel bad. You accepted it. You got a lot of money over there. Dion got a lot of money. They made a lot of money. He's making a lot of money. Kids make a lot of money. There ain't nothing to feel sorry for. Go win. Go win. Um, that's all I can say. I don't know. Uh, let's let's dive into this uh, Tyreek Hill thing, man. Always seems to have some drama. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Listen, I know I, I missed him by a few months at Garden City. I took the job. He left. Um, there was rumors on, on that campus of, of what things he did. Uh, he goes to Oklahoma State, booted out of there for something that they say he did. Goes to Northern Alabama, gets something he did. He's had numerous situations as a professional. Um, at some point, the stripes don't change. You are who you are, not what you say you are. He's almost like, I don't want to say the word worse, but I guess it is worse because of the allegations that have happened. He's like a worse model of Draymond Green to me. Like Draymond talks about he fucked up and it's well, not. Yeah, Draymond ball. ain't getting nothing like this, though. Just like, no, no, that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. Like, this, that's why I said he's a worse version of Draymond Green. All he says is, all he talks about is shit that he's supposed to do, should have did, fucked up, I owe this, I did this. But you continue to do the same shit, dog. And he always involved in a woman with a woman i think he just had his seventh kid i think his seventh kid just born um 
Listen, we could call it what it is. We could say all these things. And uh, I mean, I've been around enough shitbirds in my life. Um, I'm going to say he's a shitbird, but listen, it is what it is. I, I'm kind of tired of talking about the dude. He continues to make money. He continues to be on the forefront of everything. He's like AB times two almost. I, I don't know. I'm, uh, he played with Nick Marshall. Yes, TJ. He played with Nick Marshall at, at Garden City. Um, I don't know, dog. I, I don't want to bring him up too much because it's like we don't know the scenario. We don't really know the situation. All we know is he's always got the same issue. It's a female-involved issue. And he's got plenty of baby mamas who call him out for every single thing, which is, you can believe that or not, I don't really weigh that into it. I do weigh the fact that I've seen video of him hitting a female, so I know he does that. Uh, you can't deny it. It's like Dana White. I've seen it, dog. I have no respect. I lost it all for you. You, you have no respect for me. So I, the, the thing is, like, when is this guy... When does it end and when do people stop talking about all the shit he does? Like, he just continues to do this dumb shit. And I'm a hater, silly the boss says. He must not have a daughter, a wife, a girlfriend, or a sister, or a mama. <laughs> uh, you hit my female companion, daughter, wife. You're a bit, Tommy. Uh, Stilly the boss, you must be from a different area than me. Because you accept it, you allow it. Kind of makes you a bit. <laughs> so, anyway, where you at, Smitty? Yeah, I mean, the whole situation sounds crazy. Like, if I'm understanding this correctly, these mothers were in the backyard playing, like, football, basically. <laughs> why, why? He got a wife that's pregnant, correct? Either pregnant or just had a baby or something. Like, he had, he had, like, multiple babies this last year with multiple women, I believe. So it's hard to keep up. But this girl, I don't know why she was there. There was dating. I don't know what was the scenario was. But they in the backyard, hey, apparently. Is he, dating? Is he married? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if he's polyamorous. I don't know what the hell is going on. All I know is mother's in the backyard with this with this model playing like football, playing around. And apparently the first rep, she got his little ass. Like she down there, she a big woman. She down there hit his ass and <laughs> knocked his ass back a little bit. So his pride was on the line. He got pissed off a little bit. She all right, lined back up and actually went at her and ran her ass over. She fell down and fucked her leg up and broke her leg. That's I, so number one, why are you playing football? With a woman in the backyard, number one. Number two, if you're doing that, why are you getting serious? So what? She bumps you. You're a fucking all pro future Hall of Famer wide receiver. You gonna let a, a, a model, a woman in the backyard? Like it wasn't on camera. It's like you're embarrassed. Like we, we like why are you? Why are you so egotistical to where you have to line back up and show her and prove to her that you're that you're Tyreek Hill? You have to go run her over. That's crazy. Um. So like the whole scenario is just crazy. It's just a, a it's just a lack of maturity, you know. And you're, you're you're consistently seeing it, and it's unfortunate because it takes away from the greatness of of what he is. He's an amazing player on the football on the football field. I'm a big Tyreek Hill fan. He's phenomenal on the football field. Let me, ask, let me ask you. Let me ask you. too much stuff. Let me ask you uh, before we take commercial break. I got to ask you a, a, a relatable scenario. You vote, you root for him on the football field and then off the field. At what point, I guess my question is, at what point do you say, I can't root for this guy anymore because he's just a shit bird? Like, That's a good question, man. You know, we always have these conversations even at like, work. It's, it's, to me, it's the Art Kelly debate. Right. And I was just thinking about that too. Can you listen to Art Kelly? Can you buy his shit? Can you, can you support Art Kelly and, 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 and listen to the shit? Like, I have a seg like a separator, like a truth teller, a truth serum. Like I'm looking at it like I bumped the shit out of R. Kelly right now on this show. I don't give a fuck. All I the black ones I go to, we they still play them. I'm gonna be real. Listen, with you. Is he an absolute shit bird? Did he pee on a girl and all this whole shit? He's nah, beyond a shit bird. He's disgusting. Fucking okay, shit. he's disgusting. Whatever. The whole we can we have a million fucking adjectives and but I bumped the shit out of that motherfucking music. I and bumped. I feel you because, like, again, I, we talked about this earlier. And you said you disagree with this phrase, but this in this situation, it works. Two things can be true. Just because this motherfucker is a nasty motherfucker and did all types of shit, that don't mean that his music is out of nowhere just bad now. This motherfucker might be the best R&B motherfucker we never heard in our entire life. And that just is what it is. Same thing with, hey, listen, Kanye. People, Kanye built some weird shit, and, you know, people... Think he might be racist? I don't know. There's a lot of rumors that people go against Kanye. But 
at the end of, at the end of the day, College Dropout is still an all time album. Yeah. Like the yeah. music, the production, the beats, the stuff he's done is still what it is. Like I can't take away from that. I I saw it. I heard it. I what Tyree Hill is doing on the football field. Antonio Brown, perfect example. That motherfucker is phenomenal. Antonio Brown is one of the best players I've ever seen in my entire life. He is a Hall of Famer. He is by he's definitely no argument one of the best receivers we have ever seen. But off the field, this motherfucker is psycho. He's a lunatic. <laughs> like follow his Twitter. This motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> so I'm just saying, two things can be true. Like it is what it is. Like I think we let our emotions. I don't know if those are two them. things can be true though. I don't know if there's two things. It's not really two things can be true. It is. You can be an asshole and be a, a shit bird or whatever off the field, but be a beast on the field. Yeah, that's not really two things true though. That's it just is. real life. That's just the truth. I, I don't know if that's real. I don't know if it's two things to be true. A I think we can separate a lot of people will like even the R. Kelly situation. They like, nah, fuck that. Don't play R. Kelly. His, his music is shitty now. It, it, no, it, like it's shitty now. Like so, so fucking twenty years ago, yeah. it, was, it was banging. We loved but it. What I'm saying is, I think we use that narrative and we push this two things can be true thing. No, it's one thing's true. He's a baller. <laughs> that's it. Being a shitbird is not two things to be true. He, He's a baller. That's what we look him at, look at him as. But he's a shitbird. It is what it is. We've dealt with a million of these, Smitty. You played with them. I played, coached them. I played with them. This isn't two things to be true. We already knew you were a shitbird. By the way, I coached with AB's daddy in JUCO in Kansas. I knew the kid was a shitbird already. We also recruited him. We knew he was a baller. Same with Chris Carter's son. Played at Coffeeville JUCO. His son was unbelievable. Shitbird of all shitbirds. You talk about AB and Tyreek? Chris Carter's son, homie. Oh, way worse. So I'm just saying, like, it ain't two things can be true. We know he's a baller already. <laughs> you're, you're shit bird. My last thing here, I guess what I'm saying is this, like, the reason why I separate the two is because if you don't, then you can't be a fan of nobody. Because we all got shit. We all got dirt. We all got le- we, and you can say it's levels of stuff, sure. But we all got stuff, whether it's in the closet, whether maybe maybe only you know what you did or what you said. But we all don't walk around like your shit don't stink. So if we gonna That's say this to this person, then well, you can't be a fan of none of your favorite rappers because they all didn't did shit. Your country artists, your rock stars, your co- your favorite coaches, your whoever, we all done done some shit. So if you're gonna judge everybody based upon their mistakes or their character or whatever they are off the, you know, off the field or whatever it may be, do that for everybody. That's all I'm saying. You know but what I mean? That's why I still listen to R. Kelly. <laughs> I bump shit out of R. Kelly. Had nothing to do. I don't give a fuck. That's a you problem. <laughs> I bumped the shit out of R. Kelly. I bumped it all the way to Arizona the other day. I don't give a, I bang the shit out of R. Kelly. I could bump every album from R. Kelly. I bump Keith Sweat all day. I bump Prince all day. I bump Michael Jackson all day. All them motherfuckers I just mentioned are some weird motherfuckers. Are they not? (laughs) Shit. Y'all watch fucking Cat Williams, and you watch him more now after Shay Shay. (laughs) Let's just be real. And he was on Rogan yesterday, and he's trending again. Yeah, he trended again. He was on Rogan. Nobody cares, Smitty. I no, mean, even you, JB, like you, 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 you a weird motherfucker. Like when you not coaching and when you not on the show, you're cra- your person like crazy. You be and doing some wild cares. shit. Nobody cares. But I'm still a. Hey, I'm still watching the show. I'm still host. I'm a co-host. Cool, cool uh, at the end of the day, nobody cares. Nobody cares if you die. Nobody cares if you walk a, fuck around with a with a made up human. Nobody cares if you a bitch man cat. Nobody cares at the end of the day. And guess what? They will forget about everything we just mentioned in five minutes. Because there'll be a new tweet out. <laughs> there it is. Just another kid from Compton, y'all. Commercial break. We'll be back in five with Jeff Nadu. Yeah, we can see it. You being scary. What I gotta do? What? I, so what kind? Of, what do I gotta do? I don't, I don't know. We didn't go over there. <laughs> you gotta do a cannonball. So we gotta do a countdown, and then you are gonna run in and do a cannonball into the water. Do you know what a cannonball is? Or are you too old for that? I got to just run into a cannonball? That's all you got to do. You got to do a countdown. Five. We're going to be like five, four, three. And you're going to run in and do a cannonball. Knees up. Wrap your hands around your knees, pause, and jump in. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. I thought you wanted me to dive in. 
I, it ain't deep enough for you to dive in, I don't think. Oh, yeah, it's deep. I don't want you to kill yourself, JB. It, it ain't worth it. it. They ain't send that much money. <laughs> Come on, Chad, Come on. are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready to see? Co oh, the shirt's coming off, y'all. The shirt's coming off. Are y'all ready to see Coach JB dive into the water? Everybody that sent their money in, I want to tell y'all right now, shout out to you. Because without y'all doing that, this would not be possible. We appreciate y'all for putting your money where your mouth is. And it's about to be go time. Coach JB, how you feeling right now, JB? Talk to us. Come on, man. Pressure burst pipes. This ain't shit, dog. I'm from the mean streets, homie. JB! <laughs> he did it, y'all. Hey, that was the biggest, that was the biggest explosion I've ever seen. The whole water just left the pool. It went from seven foot deep oh, to God. three feet deep. It's Come empty on. now, man. I love it, man. Bring ash in the water. On, yeah. On, That's dope, man. JB really living living that life. Come on, Bubba. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Before we end the show, we got to see. Come on, Ash. Come on, Ash. Look at Ash. He's scared. Ash, he's scared. Ash, I don't know what this is. Come on, Come on. Damn, JB got that money, money. Look at Ash, dog oh. pelling. Okay. okay, Ash, I see you, Ash. Come on, Callie, you old school. Come on, Callie. See y'all, Callie, you old head. She like, listen, I didn't been there and done that. I don't. Oh, that's a little baby. He's so big, but he's still a baby. Hey, I love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. JB is a man of his word. If you can't go get no pussy, you cannot recruit. Keep it 100. And I used to fire coaches. Hey, coach, when last time you had some pussy? Shit, coach, been here. fire. Fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 I'm being real, homie. If you can't get no pussy, you can't recruit. That's uh... number one. I think we have to listen. I do not believe it'll be very hard to go back to the system where if you transfer, you got to sit out a year. I don't think that's going to be very yeah. hard. That that's not going to be very hard to re-implement. I, I think we've overcorrected. You know, when when guys start saying that this coach is messing up my mental health, and so therefore I should be able to play right away, and then they broke the gate open. I think. If we, if President Mark Emmert at the NCAA, who was also the president of the University of Washington when I was there, if it is going to be very simple to reestablish, if you transfer, you sit out. We don't want to go out and turn over rocks and find the hungry high school kid. Guess what, dog? You know how many times I've been told no? It just takes the one no to tell me yes. But we're so lazy, we get told no one time. Guess what? If, if, if a motherfucker told me no, you know what I'd be? A motherfucking pussyless virgin. My main man, Lancaster's finest, proud PA's fi proud Pennsylvania, Lancaster, gobble ghoul, true crime podcast legend. Follow him on all things true, tri true crime pod on TikTok, Instagram, and so on. He does a great job interviewing crime bosses. He's got mobsters looking for him to right now. This guy, 
the great notorious Nadu. You can't wait till this one comes in. He's going to have a notorious Nadu's picks today on his best ever mobster movies and his most mid or overrated mobster movies. We're going to dive into notorious Nadu. Welcome, Jeff Nadu, in. Clap it up. <laughs> what up, Jeff? What up? Hey, without, without, oh, I don't really care, but this guy, I, I missed this guy by about five months. He left Garden City Junior College, went to Oklahoma State, got a scholarship, got kicked out of there for allegedly doing some things, goes to Northern Alabama, gets kicked out of there. We've seen him on film. We've, we've, we've seen the back track record. I know you have a disgust for this guy as well. Um, Tyreek Hill just continues to be a shitbird. Uh, this girl right here, he ran over apparently in his backyard. I don't know what she's doing there. Uh, she got like 2 million Instagram followers. I didn't know who she was. Never heard of her. I guess she does cooking videos. I just need to start doing cooking videos. Yeah, we but, can tell by her photos. Yeah. Um, this guy's always into something. I don't mm -hmm. get it. Yeah, you know, that's interesting because I just interviewed a guy who – he always tells me, oh, I'm, I'm getting there. I'll be fine. I'll get him. But, but trouble always seems to find the guy, right? He always goes back to prison. He always goes back to federal prison. And, and I, I think you're right on that level. Like some of these guys, shit just finds them. And have you ever noticed it's always Tyreek Hill? Always. You know, whether it's his kids or his ex-girl or his ex-wife or his new girl. Yeah, seven baby mamas. Right. You know, he had three kids last year, uh, Jeff. In one fiscal year, three kids and got married to a completely different girl. Right. Like, I got a problem and a question with the girl. Right. That married him after three kids last year by another three different broads. Because it makes you wonder, like, what are your intentions? Like, are you with him just for the money? Or are you kind of crazy, too? Or are you guys polyamorous? What's going on? Hey, Jeff, to your point, though, Jeff... What you just said, I saw your interview with the with the blood gangster. I know a few buddies that know who that where he's from. You don't know. That's a whole nother scenario, by the way. Uh, I gotta ask you. You are what you are and what you do, not what you say you do. Like this dude continues to say some shit like we're supposed to forgive him. And it's crazy that I continue to see people forgive him. Like Draymond Green, you are who you are, bro. I'm tired of hearing you talk about what you should do and who you want to be. And if you want to be it, then go be it. Stop and stand on it. it. Yeah. yeah right. Listen, well, y'all know that's not realistic, though. If you're playing a professional sport, you got to, like, say the PC shit. Even if you don't mean it, that's you got to just say that to save face. That's that's yes. all That's all that is. Hey. It's not hard to not beat women. Okay. Well, I, oh, I ain't talking, I'm talking about the Draymond shit. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't talking about. But that. when it comes to Tyree Kill, he and with Draymond, the guy just has anger issues. He's a he he lashes out at people. He needs to get help with that. But again, it's time and time again. Oh, I'll be fine. But then he goes and does it again. You know, at what point do you say enough is enough with this guy? You know, when do you stop accepting his apology? That's my question to both of you. That's really what I I have to say. What I, do you mean? I mean. Define stopped accepting. Like, what, 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 what are you supposed to do? Like, just kick him out the league? Is that what you're saying? What, 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 what is the crime or the offense? Let's just not even say crime. Let's say the offense. Like, do you forgive Jeffrey Dahmer? Type of question. It's a fucking I'm, question. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm asking. At what point hey, do you? Forgive? sat there and looked at me too, like, like, like it was a real. He said, "Do you, you forgive Jeff?" As a black man on the show, do you you forgive Jeffrey? De Motherfucker ate my people. The fuck you talking about? Do I forgive? Yeah, he ate mine Dahmer. too. He ate mine too. He, he, he was eating. Up. He loved the fucking the, the melanin. That was he, his favorite he, type of people. He, he ate. You know, he ate some white boys like raw. <laughs> no, but his point is though. Here's his point though. He everyone. All the people he's listing on different levels have done things that are incorrect or wrong, right? If Jeffrey Dahmer came out and said, "Well, I'm not going to do this anymore. I promise, no more, no more eating people," would you, you know, forgive him? That, that my point is, though, like, what's no. the offense, Smitty? <laughs> Smitty, what's the offense? Like, but everyone did something wrong with somebody. Like Jeff, what's the offense? If I come in and I, I, I come in and sock, you know. If you hit my wife, daughter, kid, mom, daughter, any female I know, even a female I probably didn't even know, I'm probably never forgiving you ever. 
Like, no. I don't, I don't, I don't respect at all Dana White. Zero. I've saw him go across his wife's face three times. I know he's done it before because he was too comfortable doing it. I've just right. been around these type of cats. Tyreek Hill, I've seen him on video. I've seen a shitload. That's why I did not recruit certain people that I know had women, domestic violence charges, the R word, et cetera. I didn't fuck with them because I got a daughter. I got a female AD. I got a mom. I got, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I, I crawl. I draw the line. I guess my, when do you draw the line? And what, what is your with, draw the line? I think with people like Draymond Green, like it's really more about his legacy and what he'll be remembered for. Is it for the good defender and, and, and the, 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 the good wing player that he is, or is it the, 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 the shit bird that's always getting into it with people? Look at Montez Burfick, prime example. Vontaze Burfix remembered for, you know, some of the dirty shit he did while as a player. Throw out the fact that he was actually a pretty good linebacker at the end of the day. You know, we hey. think of Joe, when we think of Joe Paterno, we don't think of all the wins he had. We think of the end of his career, right? I think that's where Draymond will have an issue. It's more of the legacy. Yeah, I, mean, and, and I, and I, I get our real, not to cut you off. I get our examples, but like, let's not compare Draymond to fucking. Uh, a, a, a woman beater or a fucking well, no, that's that's what I what I sexual assault. I, I understand what you're saying. I, that's, that's why what, I mentioned perfect. I just like these a whole different category. Like that's drink why, my little attitude that's problem. Why, that's a whole other area. Like, but that's why I put that's why I said Tyreek Hill is a much worse version of Draymond Green earlier in the show. I said that he continues to come out and say a bunch of shit. Like Tyreek's come out again and said, I didn't do nothing, blah blah blah. Dog, every single day there's something new with you, and you keep talking about it, and you keep having certain things happen. Draymond's the same way, but this guy actually saw hit a female, so that way you're you're much worse, Draymond Green. And Smitty, remember, it, these are not allegations. This is a guy who pled to this, right? He beat his girlfriend up, a pregnant girlfriend, throwing the fact that it's likely he broke his own son's arm. Okay, your son just doesn't break his arm. Okay, no one did it for him either. The the guy is a low life, always has been, always will be, and until he, uh, there's nothing he can do in my eyes. He'll always be a. It's just like JB said. I don't care what Dana White does. We still saw him, you know, do what he does. You know, it's just the truth. This yeah. is a good conversation though, because like I'm with you guys too, but I, you know, it goes back to like. A uh, previous conversation we had today about like everyone has something, right? Everyone, no one's perfect. Everyone has some shit that we've done, said. It might be something that like I did, the only I know I did. Something that Jeff did on the only Jeff knows he's done. But we all done, done some fucked up shit to some to some extent, to some degree. There are levels to everything, so I know everything's not the same. Every crime, every every offense isn't the same. But I think it is a good question and conversation that we're having right now, JB. As far as like at, at, at what point, like like. You guys are saying, no matter what Dana White does, you will never forgive him. The next 50 years, he could be a fucking stand-up man, give back. He can learn. He could go and learn from his mistake. No matter – there's nothing he can do. It's a wrap. He puts his hands on a woman one, one time. Well, probably more in his situation. But even – again, we've seen it on camera one time. It's a wrap. It's over. It's like, but man, I, it's like, I wonder, like – so, like, just think about that. Even outside of putting hands on women, like one bad mistake, you just fuck up everything. Because well, but, 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 but it's a level of mistakes. If and I'm not saying it's him, but let's say it involved kids instead of Ooh, right, 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 women. Right, 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 like right. no one would fuck with him. But it, right. but a woman, no, it's a, well, we kind of still like him. What's the difference? Like, like, let me ask you guys: if this whole P Diddy shit comes out and it's true, let's just say whatever, whatever. Is, like usually, there's smoke, there's fire. There's more Deshaun yeah. Watson news. Girls coming out now. If you know, if you haven't seen, like we've been talking, I talked about it for years now. There's more shit coming out now. Uh, there's also NFL news that they've said we are not done with the Sean Watson investigation. There still could be longer-term suspensions ahead. If you haven't seen Roger Goodell's comments, they're out there. So there's smoke, there's fire, usually. Usually, right? And there's also false allegations. I've been, in, I've been in one of those guys, so I get both sides of it. At what point do you say, all right, this guy is who he is. Like, there, there's too many cats coming out. Is, are they all money hungry grabbers from for the P Diddy thing, or did he really do some shit? Because I've heard some crazy shit from some people in in, the, in that business, dog. And it's like I don't know if they'd make it up. Now, would they? Who knows? I wasn't there. But if that guy comes out true and all this shit's true that they're saying, do you cut him off? 
Yeah, but you I, you do. But is he is he like worse than R. Kelly? But in this in this situation, though, like it's not just one action. It's not like a one time thing. Like it's not a like he like. For example, um, what's my guy's name? Uh, I'm having a brain fart. R- the running back from the Ravens who beat beat his wife up in the fucking elevator real bad. Ray Rice. Ray Rice. Everything from what I've heard, I don't know the man personally. I can't speak on, but from what I have heard from people who are close to him, close to the situation, reporters, journalists, people who have just stayed tight to that situation over the years, they have said this man has done everything he possibly could to fucking like, ch- like, ch- like change his his to learn learn from it, to give back to women, to uh, to change his minds, like everything. And he and that woman are still together. You're good. It ain't been nothing else ever happened. That video was horrific. It was, it was, I watched it. It fucking pissed me off as a man seeing that happen. But from that, from that time on, the man allegedly has done a whole complete 360. It's not like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, it's like, do you look at that person and it's like, well, oh, well, the video was too bad. It is what it is. I don't give a fuck what good you've been doing since then. I could never be back on your side. It's like, huh? It's like, I don't know. I think it's, it's very case to case. Right, right, I, right. I, I'll just say that. I think there are unforgivable things that you can never forgive an individual for doing. And when they do it, that's that. But I think one thing we have a problem with now is allegations have defined who people are, right? So, for instance, let's just look at the last week. Meek Mill has been regarded as a homosexual. We right. have no proof of that. There's nothing, to, you know. He, it could be someone else. It could be him. It could not be him. But we're not going to remember when they make a retraction and say, hey, it was actually someone else. Right. Everyone's just going to think forever that he's a homosexual. Right. And then that's the problem now. We hear allegations and these fucking sick people on the Internet just run with it. Uh, is, is it out? Is it a, regarding Diddy only, though? Well, well the, with the Meek Mill stuff, yeah. So basically, some like report came out said that Diddy has some relations with a Philadelphia rapper who used to date Nicki Minaj. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. This comes from one person, one guy, who's de- be, essentially being deposed on what happened. He's co- he's cooperating with them and telling them what happened. He's now throwing other people's names in. Remember, these are people. I talk to these rat people every day. They're not believable a lot of the time. They throw shit in, conjecture in, and take the fucking focus away from them. And this is where I get off of a lot of people, man. You talk rat this, rat that, but when the rat benefits you, now all of a sudden you want to believe everything they say. This guy is no different than any other scumbag rat that the government deals with or, or police deal with. This guy's telling a story. He's now throwing people's names in, and we don't know if it's true or not. Oh, I did this, I did that. Well, that guy did this, that guy did that. You don't have any proof of that. He's just throwing his name in. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's, people it's, are running with it because it benefits yeah. them. That's why on platforms like this, we got to keep it real. We got to be careful with, with, with what we what we say. We put out there because we are we are part of that media now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I'm always honing in. I'm like, hold on real quick. I'm like, is that a fact? Before we dive into this. This comes from one person yep. that said he, that new P. Diddy, and he's throwing in other. Like, let me ask you this. Obviously, I get this is connected, but he, we don't know that he's being real. He could be lying. Listen, rats lie. These people lie. They, they make themselves bigger than what they were, whatever. This is from one guy. This is from, it's not like accredited sources coming out and saying, we know this person's a homosexual. We have proof. Unless you see the guy doing shit, you don't know nothing. Hey, rats lie, though, when it really becomes the guy that told them, I'm going to fuck you up who's bigger than the initial cat you ratted on. So a, a, a bigger crime boss is going to come out and say, you're a dead man. Then he's a rat now telling a new story and starting to change his original fucking lie. Sammy the Bull Gravano does that. Sammy the Bull Gravano, 20 years, told a whole different story than he told me. So this is what they do. They, 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 they lie to benefit themselves, and people like me either call them out or just watch it and enjoy it. You know that's what these people do. Hey, we we got some uh, we got we got notorious Nadu's uh, top crime sh- uh, boss uh, or crime movies or or mobster uh, movies we're gonna talk about today. Uh, I want to ask you about a crime that was committed by one of these Chiefs Queen Queendom fan base guys. 
Uh, have you heard the guy that ro- that wears the mascot? He's been robbing banks across the country. He's got seven seven banks he's robbed in seven states. And then his lawyer said this. From the beginning of this case, folks, the government has been blitzing and Xavier's pocket was collapsing. But today, Xavier stepped into the pressure. He took responsibility for his actions. He stood up in court, humble and repentant, and admitted what he had done. Now, if I know anything about Xavier, and if the Chief's Kingdom knows anything about Chief Saholic, we know that he doesn't give up. We know that if he stumbled and he fell, he didn't let his knee touch the ground. And that's because he's capable of doing a great thing. And he knows that there's still hope. We still have a lot of work to do on his case, but Xavier wants everyone to know that he loves the Chief's Kingdom, he loves Kansas City, and he hopes that you'll rally to his support. Thank you and God bless. That is a good lawyer right there. Great lawyer, actually. And let me tell you why. He admitted to what he did. He took a plea because he knew if he went to federal court, he would be fucking destroyed and they'd give him probably life. So he said, you know what? I'll plea. I'll plead the one count. He'll probably get seven, 10, 12 years. And the guy's right. I mean, the guy's going to get out. He has an end of the road and he'll try to be a better guy. He took it responsibility. I don't think there's much more you can say. This motherfucker said he stumbled, but his knee didn't touch the ground. He said they sit the blitz. He's a lawyer. But he stepped up in the pocket, moved his feet around, kept his eyes down the field, and threw a 60 yard bomb. And kept yeah, the football going. stuff is stupid. I don't understand that. I guess he said the guy to... ran a zone read, read the defensive end. The defensive end closed, so he kept the ball and ran to the outside. Yeah, I don't know why he said the stupid football stuff, but I mean, he is right. I mean, he he is trying. He had a fucking white on white suit tie with shirt, and he was up there, and he kept using the queen queendom fan base to defend him. Motherfucker looking at his notes like fucking uh Robert Sala too the whole time. He was and most of the guy. fan base will still defend him. Um, I guarantee you they will. You hey, know? Diddy, my I got a twin brother Jeff. I don't know if you've heard about my twin brother. His name's Jabron. Brown. He comes on the show now. Uh, yesterday, uh, he said this about Diddy. He heard about Diddy. Have you ever been to a Diddy party before? And if so, what was your experience like? Diddy or AE? Is that <laughs> is that verified? How, how, how do you know? How do you know that Diddy's AE? I'm just curious. Like, is that word on the street? Is that what you're hearing in the streets right now, or what? Yeah, we got this hard hat to the ground. We know what's going on out. He's an AE. He was He's a, like you. That's what he does. Well, I get AE. He is the AE. Yuck. Lucy, Stop. drop that chat. Lucy, I just, she dropped that on Instagram. Uh, Shout out to Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. We got a lot going on here. We got a lot going on here today, uh, Jeff, on uh, Notorious Nadu Friday here. It's Fired Up Free Game Friday. Some of my top five mob films of all time. And these are my top, not your fucking top. Hey, you only said two overrated ones, though. But but, I, but see, because that's the issue. There's not a lot of overrated mob films. I Thank you. I it. hate the overrated. That shit is hard as fuck. No, the, the ones that I put are just bad. They're bad mob films that you never have seen and you should never want to watch. Um, but I'll tell you, like, there are certain mob films that I'm not the biggest fan of, but a lot of people like. Which I'll so, say. baby, is this bottom of the barrel? We're doing your bottom of the barrel or top of the world? Top of the world. So th- these are your best? Correct. These are the best mob films of all time, at least to me. All right, break them down. Start for number five. Bring right, so some energy real quick. Break it down, and let's, let's number hear it. One, number one is up top, no one touching it. And if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend you go watch it on YouTube for free. It is the biographical Gotti film. It was came out in 1996. It is the most potent, real look into the life of John Gotti. Armand Asante is electric. He's elite. The character arcs, the character development are great. The roles, everything is great. 
And any real mob guy, so I'm talking about guys like Michael Franzese, they will tell you the same thing about this film. It is very well done. Number two, A Bronx Tale. I think it speaks for itself. It's a good mix of the racial tensions in the 60s, as well as a kid who has to decide between a father who loves him and is trying to teach him right and the streets who are giving him an education as well. I think it's a fantastic movie. It's, to me, one of the best movies ever made out of any genre. Number three, this is going to be a questionable one for a lot of people. The Irishman is the most realistic mob film to me ever made. It is the reason I started the sit down. It is everything real about the mob, that story, everything about it. I think it's a weed. Number four, Casino. I don't really need to go into that. I love the character roles. I love Spilatro, the, the De Niro character. De Niro did a great job. It's just a, 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 an elite film. What else do you say? Number five, Donnie Brasco. I just love Johnny Depp in it. It's also very realistic. A lot of the stuff that happened in it is actually real. And a lot of the films that I picked are based on real life events, stuff that actually happened. A lot of the other films are just fantasy, really. They just are made up. These are more realistic. That's why I like Real it. quick, this is a good ass list. I had a question. The Irishman just like came out like kind of recently, right? Like, a couple years ago. It was like a three hour movie. People have to watch it like it's like four the hours. Irishman movie, came out a couple, couple of years ago. It, I think it's a wasted film on this generation because this generation has no attention span. Even right. though they watch four straight hour episodes of a TV show. Right. Um, the, the Irishman tells the story of how powerful the mafia was. And then by the end, it showed us the matriculation of one person who decided to go into that life and what the real life end is for you. The last 40 minutes, The Irishman, are as good as any movie I've ever watched. I mean, it is elite. I and never watched it. I gotta, I gotta go it's watch very it scary, Smitty, because it tells, it also shows how you age and, and what the end is for most of us, right? And it, it tells us kind of that horror, you know? Um, I love The Irishman. I, I, would, I would put it very high. You know, so my, my, my follow up question before we go to your like your other side is like, OK, The Irishman is a recent movie. It came out a couple years ago. Right. So pr prior to that, like, like, I guess which movie got replaced? Like there had to be like if we asked this question three years ago, what movie went down? A lot of people will, will, you know, go with status quo and say Goodfellas. I like Goodfellas. Very good movie. Um, it, it's obviously a favorite of many people. Um it's also, though, not true, though, on a lot of levels. A lot of the stories they put out there were not stories Henry Hill lived by. It's also we're taking the word of someone who is a known liar. Everything he said is a lie. Um, I just kind of personally, it's a good movie. If it's on, I watch it. But I'm not just going to throw it in the top five to me. It's good. It's not a top five movie to me, at least personally. Same with The Godfather. Good film. I think at times it's very boring, though. You know, and if you're telling me you love The Godfather, but you don't like The Irishman, I just don't think you know what the fuck you're talking about. The Godfather is fucking boring at times. All right, all right. And as far as The Irishman, I can, and, and, and most of you fucking retards in the chat, you can't fuck with me on this shit. Trust me. I, I know what's true and what's not true. I know all of these films. I, I'm not even, I can't argue because this is your wheelhouse. Like, this is what I talk about with quarterbacks and shit. People talk, blah, 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 blah. Listen, it's also our opinions, and we all have our top five opinions on cookies and fucking cakes, and everyone has their own shit. And, and it just blows my mind when someone comes out and goes, Oh, what about? Uh, it's it's our list. opinion. This yeah. is our list, Make not your list. your list. Yeah. Make your Fuck list. Fuck your list if you in a chat. Correct. Fuck your list. And listen, uh, uh, all of you, uh, most of you folks have not watched these films, so you can't say they're not good. Yeah. They're personally, good I'm a huge. Mob guy, I love watching those movies. Irishman to me, even for me, my old ass on the hill, it was too long and drawn out for me. Uh, I was you, know more about it. It. you know more about it. So I it was too long for me. I don't know. It, it, and let me just explain the, the, the whole saying. thought when I hear the Irishman, it's always oh, it's not true. Okay, first of all, there's nothing other than Frank Sheeran didn't kill Joe Gallo in a restaurant. That's one thing that's not true about the film. Other than that, it's 100 percent true. He was involved with Jimmy Hoffa. He knew all these different people. All these people, it's not true. So what's not true about it? Tell me what's not true. Because you don't know fuck all. You don't know the difference between John Gotti and Al Capone. Shut the fuck up. All right? I, I uh, man, I, I, there's a lot of good ones out there that I like, too. Like, 
there's some great ones out there. I don't know. Uh, Jeff, real, side note, how did you get so knowledgeable of, of, of like, this the mob life? Like, at what point, like, when did you start this shit and, like, really start? The, were you reading books? Were you just watching documentaries? Well, like, I'm just curious. You know everything about the shit. It's, it's impressive. I, uh, well, I used to watch documentaries, read books, that kind of thing. But then I just started really delving into indictments and looking into court cases and FBI files. A lot of this stuff is research. It's either it comes out in court and there's a database, a federal database you can pay for and log into. and You can get all these FBI court cases, files, everything. And then I just started talking to people that were in that world, not just informants either, all sorts of different people. And I retain knowledge well, and I guess it just- I, If I did a five, if I did my top five list, so the characters were real in the movie, obviously a lot of the movie wasn't, but The Untouchables to me is still, for a movie, is one of my favorites. Good film. I mean, it, it tells the story of, of you know them trying to go after Al Capone. What, what again, the, my issue with that film is, and I don't mean to be you know one of these people, but- Elliot Ness had very little to do with actually arresting Al Capone, but it is a great movie. I know. And Sean Connery's character. Yeah, I love sure. it. You know, sure. uh, you know, I, I, I loved a lot of that shit. Frank Nitty's character in that movie. I liked um, yeah, Frank Nitty. Absolutely. And I knew all those, you know, covered those guys before I watched, followed those guys. So I liked those the real guys. Uh, but I also liked the uh, road to perdition. That's a good movie. Unbelievable movie to me. No. Uh, unbelievable movie. Uh, Tom Hanks played a fucking gangster. Like, it motherfucker is a man's man in that one. Uh, yes, Big Dave. That's exactly what I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, Jeff. Overrated. If you at bottom of the barrel, just off the he, top of the cut. These films here are horrific. <laughs> these two films right here. The, these are better off. Th these movies, you shouldn't even call them movies. They're fucking terrible. Yeah, terrible. I tried to watch that guy he went, and I had to turn it off. This shit, was, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> John Travolta is so bad. The, the, the Listen, like the, move, the music, when you hear a mob film, the music should not have Pitbull, right? That, that should not be. The, that was the music in the film. It was Pitbull. It's like, what the fuck? From Miami? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are we doing here? What did, are we you, doing uh, here? did you like Hoffa? I've never seen Hoffa. I can't say. Really? Tempton Wolf is might be bad, worse than Gotti, to be fair. Um, this these are really bad movies. Really. Hey, bad. we should do a. You got to watch Hoffa. I think that's a Jack Nicholson, uh, Joe Pesci, unbelievable movie. I think yeah. you like Hoffa. It's the kind blood. of the Irishman. It's kind of mixed with a lot of the Irishman in it. Um, it's a good. I movie. would. I would also put on my good list if there was like an honorable mention, The Departed. It's a great movie. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Black Mass is, is solid. That's a good one. Yeah, th these are rough right here. Go who's, your top, who's your top three gangsters in real life? Your top three gangsters of all time. Just gangsters. Uh, this. No, don't tell us. Don't tell us. Because we're going to do next week. We're going to do it. We're going to do that segment with Cliffhanger. You. Cliffhanger. I tease y'all. Yeah, don't I tell us. Notorious. Notorious uh may do. may do next week. All right, all right. We had Frank Martin on yesterday, the head coach of UMass, great legend, K-State, South Carolina, has been some final four. Oh, he's a great interview. Good for you yeah. guys. Yeah, he's a good dude. Uh good friend. He's coming out here after the turf. They don't make the tournament, he'll be out here watching it from uh Cali. Uh he's a Miami guy though. Uh, where are you at with uh can we dive into some sleepers as we get close to the tournament? Let's do it. Uh, all right, let's are there some sleepers that some people can make some money on um, in the uh, that's entering this thing that is going to come down to a conference tournament or something? Um, or are there some sleeper shoe-ins right now? I know Gonzaga you was on your list. Um, what I know that's a sleeper usually, but this year Gonzaga may be considered a sleeper. Uh, there's when another give, You mentioned some. Go ahead. When I give a sleeper, it's – do I think this team could get to the final four, right? Because to make any money on a sleeper, let's say 100 to 1, 75 to 1, to one getting to the final four is more realistic. Winning the whole thing, very difficult for a team like that to do. So I'm always going to look at getting to the final four because then I can hedge out and make some money. 
as far as a couple of teams that I have my own, obviously uh, Gonzaga, uh, I mentioned them. I think they will get into the NCAA tournament. I think they are good enough to get into the NCAA tournament. And when they do, their starting five is as good as anyone in the countries. Okay, We look at what they did in the non-con. They don't have the, the team like they've had in the years past, but they're still very good starting five. They're still well coached. This team is as good as anyone right now offensively. They're playing great basketball headed into the uh, into March. They won another big game last night. They just beat Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're shooting the ball a lot better. Um, th and they're going to be low in the market as far as the pricing on them. People don't think they're very good, and no one really wants to back them. But if they get in, they're a team that could definitely get to the Elite Eight or Final Four. Uh, Boise, that's another West Coast team. I already bet them. 55 to 1 to get to the final four. They have a player. His name is Max Rice. He is the son of the coach of that team, Leon Rice. He's a scorer, pure scorer, one of the better scorers you don't know about. Another group, very deep, very good starting five. They played together for a long time. They're a big team. They can combat you on defense and they make shots. They're also going to take you out of the tempo you want to run. A lot of teams today want to go up and down very fast. They're going to take you out of transition, which Again, it's how you beat a team like Tennessee or Alabama or a group like that. So I like the kind of difficult handicap they are game to game. Throwing the fact that their coach is a very good game planner. I like him a lot. Um, I like Boise. A very deep one. Very deep. I'm talking about they only get in if they win their conference tournament. McNeese State. McNeese State out of Louisiana. Let me just explain. It's going to be a big price. You're going to get 100 to 1 at least. Their coach is Will Wade. He used to be at LSU. The only reason he's at McNeese is because he's been railroaded by the NCAA for paying players. You know, like anyone didn't do that. So he's at McNeese. What he's done is he's went out and got a bunch of kids that were at higher level universities. They're now at McNeese. I think it was one game since Thanksgiving. It's crazy. Uh, they are a team that is really, really good. They have a bunch of athleticism. Uh, they can shoot the rock. They're top 10 in the country in three-point percentage. They're a good defense. They don't turn it over. They get to the free throw line. McNeese State is really good. They could win a game or two. Hey, they, put your money on them. Where are, you, where are you at with South Carolina? A good friend of mine is a betting guy. He's like, South Carolina is very underrated. I think they can make a run. Are they? I haven't watched them at all. So Are they good this year? They are. They've been very good. In fact, their coach could be coach of the year just with some of the stuff he's been able to do. They've went from being a, just kind of a very blase SEC team to a team that's knocking off, you know, uh, Kentucky. They're knocking off Tennessee. And what did, what did I say they do? They take you out of running up and down. They make you play in the half court. They're a good defensive team. They rebound. Um, and they make it difficult just to play against them. No one wants to play a team that's going to walk the ball up the court, take you out of the way you want to run. So, that's kind of how they've done it. They've come off a little bit recently. They've lost a couple of games, but uh, he's done a great job down there. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. Another a real quick sleeper. Someone's mentioned your chat. Um, South Florida, a lot of people like what they've done. Yeah, they've been great. really good. Um, they're going to have to, to duel against Florida Atlantic, a team that we remember from last year. Um, but they're another team. You know, I, I don't know if they can actually beat Florida Atlantic when it matters most, but um, – He's done a nice job, their new coach. Down that there. was uh, Frank Martin, uh, biggest win of the year. He's hoping that they can get deep into their tournament and use that South Florida win to get them over the hump. Right now, he said, they're, I think their RPI is 80. They got to get into the 60 range to try to get into the tournament. Uh, they got to make a run, though. They got two games left before the tournament. Listen, uh, UMass is a team that is in a conference. Look, Dayton's really good, really good. But other than that, it's a blase conference this year. It's not as good as it usually is. And they're leaving conferences. Yeah, they can make a run. Um, you know, St. Louis is not as good. Loyola is not as good. Uh, Richmond's decent. VCU is not as good. So UMass could make a run. Um, the problem with, with, with UMass, and, and if I'm a coach, how I would scout them, is I just throw a zone out at them. They can't shoot three. Can't shoot. Ah. No. So you just throw a zone out at them and – you you kind of wall off the paint, and that's what Dayton will do against. It's funny, them. he mentioned that yesterday on defending that exact scenario. He said he'd rather defend that instead of a cat's attacking the rim at him. He goes, "We we're horrible at getting attacked to the rim. We we can defend the three, we can't defend the rat the rim." And that's that's concerning on both ends because when you're a defense, and you're playing a team that gets downhill and can get down, and you can't stop it. You want to get out and run. That's a bad recipe to stop anybody and throw it if you can't make shots. 
when you're getting presented with the opportunity to make them, that, that's concerning to me. Let me let me this dive is, into the tournament and some some nuances that people and betters won't probably realize. San Diego State made a fucking final run last year. You've said they're pretty good. We got some San Diego fans in here or natives in here. A, do you like them this year making another run? And B, are they going to be ranked high enough to get a West Coast seeding, which we all, you and I know what that means. Will they be placed in Seattle or Spokane or New Mexico, somewhere on the West Coast with a little bit of following? How big is that when you're a better uh, to a team that can literally not travel all the way to the East Coast like some teams. UCLA used to be a four seed and have to go all the way to fucking Connecticut. Uh, it's huge for a West Coast team to stay home in the first two rounds or so. Does San Diego State stay on the West Coast, in your opinion, early rounds? They definitely will. I think they're a four seed. As long as they don't screw up uh, towards the end of the season here and you know, make a decent run in the Mountain West tournament, that's a great conference. So there's really no skin off their backs if they do lose, let's say, in the final, that's a great conference. They're going to get a bunch of teams in the NCAA tournament. I have them as a four seed, and I have them in the West bracket. Um, here's the issue, though. They have struggled mightily away from their own building this year. Um, they're going to have to figure that out. Um, that's been an issue for this team all season. Um, they're really good at home. But when you send them to Boise or you send them to Nevada, they've struggled. Uh, so they need to they need to start winning on the road. But um, they'll be on the West Coast. I, I'm going to guess they're going to face like the Big West or, or someone like that. It would be interesting to see because I, I kind of have them in the same area of where BYU is, one of their former mm-hmm. um, teams they used to play. So, yeah, they'll be a four or five seed in the West. Four to five seed. Let me ask you this real quick before we transition. What is Purdue missing? And the reason why I ask that is I feel like the last few years, like we they're always the top seed, one, two, three, whatever. But it gets to the tournament, and they always like lay an egg. They fall short. You know, though, whether it's the – you know, Sweet 16, a lot of times they don't even make it that far, it seems like. I, like in your, in your opinion, are they missing anything or do they have everything they need to, to make a run and win, win the whole damn thing? I just think the confluence for them just didn't come together at the right times. A couple of years ago, they had a kid, Carson Edwards. I mean, he was an electric player, um, and, and that was kind of all they had. You think about what if Edie was on with Carson Edwards? They probably would have won, and then – once Edwards leaves, then they have Edie, and then he doesn't have necessarily the guard play last year. Mm. If they can't win it this year, I don't know if they ever will. This is, to me, the second-best team in America outside of Houston. I think Purdue is made it clear all year their guards are good enough. They rebound the ball at a really high level. And another thing, they generally get the calls in games. You look at their foul discrepancy in games, they generally shoot 10 free throws more than their opponent plus every game. They have the best player in the country on the court. He's seven foot five. Uh, plus, they have the chip on their shoulder. Remember that, that last year they lost to a 16 seed. And I'll just make the same case: Virginia lost to a 16 seed. The next year they won the NCAA tournament. That is a chip you just can't really produce. Only one team has it, and it's them. If this year they can't win it, I don't think Matt Painter ever will. Hey, how's this kid in Indiana State cream Abdul Jabbar, the white Joker? They call him the baby Joker. Uh, he's a oblong Joker build, kind of non-athletic, but he's fucking killing. I guess Indiana State Larry Bird uh, numbers. Are they a factor? Is this guy that good? Yeah, his name is Robbie Avila. Um, he is a really good player in the Missouri Valley Conference. That said, he's a really good player in the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, you look at against Alabama, they got steamrolled. You look at a couple of other teams, they got beat up by Michigan State. Um, listen, they're going to have to win their tournament to get in. Um, the kid's really, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a favorite. You know, he looks, he's got the dumb glasses. He kind of looks like a, a throwback. You mentioned Jokic. There is a little bit of, you know, again, he's not Nikola Jokic, but he has the the, 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 the kind of I don't care attitude, just kind of blase, blase, does what he has to do. Um, they're going to have to win their tournament. They're a really good team, one of the better offenses in the country, but they've been able to kind of mow down a lot of bad teams, um, and they have struggled at times. They lost the game a couple of weeks ago against a really bad team. Throw in the fact that they're not really experienced in winning at a high level. I'll make it back. A week ago or two, they were ranked for the first time. They proceeded to lose the next game. So how do they deal with the big bright lights? This kid's got a lot of fanfare behind him. 
he may not even get into the tournament. I hope he does. I think they're good enough, and they could test the team, but defensively, they're pretty bad. That's the problem. Jeff, the next few weeks, the 17th is Selection Sunday. They're going to pick, you know, the, the 21st, I believe, is the first round, or the 19th uh, is the first round, four, or the first four, whatever they call it now. Uh, and then the 21st, I believe, is the first round of the tournament. So we got a couple weeks before we get to nitty-gritty, and we'll start diving into this uh, deeper and deeper. But it's free game Friday, Jeff. Um, I got I to gotta ask you, some. we got some poll questions for you as well, but I got some questions. Uh, and I'm gonna start reading DMs on the show live because I'm I'm tired of these fucks. It's going but down in the DM. I got it's going down. This broad right here from the Sopranos is you, one of your favorites. You know yep. this broad. She showed her bank account on la- online and she had ten dollars apparently. If it's real or not, I don't know. She showed that she had ten dollars in her bank account and she went on OnlyFans and then saved her house from being foreclosed on and in basically 24 hours. I can I go out there and put a G string on and fucking save my house? I don't think people want to see you, JB. I'm gonna be real with you. But uh, like this, this uh, listen, I'm a Sopranos guy. I like Sopranos and shit. I'm I lo- I liked her in the movie. She played well, you know. She played what's his name's girl. I, I but I don't know if I'd pay her to save her for for her house. Well, you I don't think, know what she's doing on there. Yeah, she's not. Um, she's not sucking dick and, and having sex on camera. She's just posting photos like this. Now, for me, I wouldn't pay for that, but I think there are a lot of people that are fans of the show, and I think it was really a charity, a lot of the people. I think a lot of people will now go and support her now. This is incredible marketing by whoever's behind this. Um, Getting people kind of sad. Oh, I liked her. She was likable, and she was likable. That's another thing. People liked her as a character. People felt that she probably shouldn't have went when she did, Um, and people are willing to – he pulled on their, their purse strings a little bit for, for a charity. And she did a nice job doing that. From what I understand, her mortgage was about to be foreclosed on. And she needed to be, you know, she was kind of desperate and she did what she had to do. I think a lot of women should do this. I'm not saying you should go on only hand and suck dick. But you see some of these girls posting photos on Instagram. You have a following. Why not post it on OnlyFans? Charge a couple of dollars for it. You're getting it for free. Instagram's making money off you. I think hey, we should start only fan and just cuss people out. Like that's a real fetish. I'm not trying to be funny. That's a that's a real deal fetish. Little people, right? Just cuss them motherfuckers out. TikTok requested to cuss everybody out on TikTok all every day. No, but do it on OnlyFans and charge. We probably be making millions. And then I'm gonna do OnlyFans just showing my fucking arms because people like biceps, and I got some good fucking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my curls back going. So I've been I've been lacking in the weight room. Flabby. For 30 years old, you look flabby. At 30, I'm way I'm stronger than you. I look way better than you. My skin better than you. My dick bigger than yours. My hair look better than yours. I'm, I'm I'm faster than you. I'm quicker than you. Everything. Hey Jeff, I commend you, Jeff. You keep posting these old photos of you, dog. You were a big dude. I, I commend you. What you how far you've came is crazy. Appreciate you should it. learn from from that, JB, and do the same thing. It's not easy, by the way. Just. NFL linemen, they they get out of the league. They either die of massive heart failure or or uh, you know fucking they have a million disease, like high cholesterol. They get diabetes. They lose weight. Mark Sherrith is one. Uh, a lot of guys have lost hundreds of pounds to come back and lose it as an old lineman and D lineman. Dog, it's hard as shit. I've talked to a lot of cats. It's fucking hard to do, especially as you get older. Metabolism fucking <laughs> shrinks. Uh. So maybe, hey, hey, Jeff, we got uh, some poll Real questions quick, that we, we did this week. Real quick on that. I fasted yesterday well, and the day before, 32 hours. It was the first time I did over 31 hours. Man, I felt great. I love fasting. That's Jeff, the key. I, did right. a, I do 72-hour fast, just straight that's, water. That's crazy. I've never done that. I mean, I, I, I probably could if I really wanted to, but. I do a 90-hour fast. I don't eat or drink nothing. A what? I do a 90-hour fast. I don't eat or drink anything. Wow. Yeah, I thought 31 hours was long. I did 24 hours a lot. I know 90 hours for nothing. Yeah, you never did a 90 hour. Oh, no. no, it was just funny because she was like, oh. was Jeff, Jeff, Jeff was like, hey, I did a 32 hour nothing. fast. It's the best I've ever done. JB immediately crushes it. Well, I did a fucking same two hour fast. I was like, well, fuck it. I do a 90 hour fast. Know, Jeff and I discussed this on the show. I did a 72 hour. Remember when we started? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. The proudest thing I ever did too. I never took any medication. I had no weight loss surgery. I didn't get lipos. I didn't get any of that stuff. I did it through diet and exercise. That was it. 
That's the best way, dog. Doing, doing some shit that the motherfucker said you could not do. The greatest feeling in the planet. Yeah, but see, even now it's oh, he did coke or he did the, you, these fucking people can't ever give you a fucking. Well, I could look at you and tell you didn't do coke. Your fucking uh, jawline would be sucked in. Yeah, I definitely didn't you do. Smoke coke. crack, don't you? You smoke yeah. crack, don't you? <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, the crowd likes you. To, the, the fans like Jeff today. But usually they don't like Jeff. We love it. Because you know why? I actually like, like when they don't like Jeff. Shit. We're, we're in his yeah. wheelhouse. We're doing I actually like when they don't like Jeff. Last two days have been our worst numbers for a long time. We had the first three days back this week. We're double digits. Now we're fucking. So let me ask you, Jeff. Poll question of the week. We had a couple we're going to ask you. Would you rather get be watched fucking or watch someone else fucking? Wait, explain that again. Say it again. Would you rather have a couple watch you fuck, okay. or would you and your white girl rather watch a couple fuck? Yeah, listen, you're asking me the question, so I'll respond. I don't engage in shit like this. I wouldn't engage in shit like this. Um, I'd rather watch them watch me. I know what I'm doing. You rather have so Matt said the same thing. I don't know if I want anyone watching me, but then I don't. I listen. I want to make this clear. I wouldn't do any of this shit. You're asking me the question, so I will answer. But well, I would never couple watching me. But like if if if, if another chick, was I, like, I'm with you, Jeff Smitty. I agree. I would never do it either. I, it's not, couple, it's not but like if, another, if another chick was, was like was getting turned on by how you smash, you know that that might be interesting. To me, it's I don't a, another, well, I don't want another dude in there. To me, it's a lose lose. I don't want to do either of this stuff. But yeah, I I trust what I can do. I'll just pretend they're not there. Jada, do you know what you're doing though, Jada? Like we, we can't watch if you know what you're doing. Like, is it gonna be it's gonna be entertaining? Is it gonna be boring? Is it gonna be like I don't know, Jada? Like, I don't know if you got that experience, Jada. Miss Benz. That's an all-time name, by the way. Jada Benz is an all-time fucking very, name. Yeah, very porn star. Jeff, you want to show this? Yeah, absolutely. It's Google. Uh, this is Jeff for the transformation that he's made. Uh unbelievable. Uh, shout out to Jeff. you know he was that big? I know. I know he's. I know he's big. I know he lost weight, but I know he lost. Like he lost weight, like capital E I G H T. This is impressive. Like God, Lee, that's impressive. Fuck Jeff. Got to cut it up again. That's fucking good. Hey, that motherfucker look like Norman Cheers. You ever seen Norman Cheers? That motherfucker oh. looked just like him. I saw him. When I saw the picture, I thought it was Norman Cheers. And I'm like, you fuck it. Is that Jeff Nadu? And I didn't know Jeff at the time. And I was like, fuck that. Was I saw him on Barstool. I saw a picture somebody sent me. I'm like, damn. And then when I saw him and met him, I'm like, damn. You lost a lot of fucking weight. I, is it, what's his name, Barstool, right now? Frank the Tank? Isn't he losing a shitload of weight? Yeah, Frank's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Jeff. How can I lose just like a quick 15 pounds in the next month? It's 15. Again, you you think I'm crazy, but fasting. I mean, it, it is a if you research fasting, it is a great way to lose weight, man. Quick. And and I'm not even Smitty, I'm not even talking about anything crazy. Like I haven't eaten since last night at, at, at 6 30 p.m. And I won't eat again tonight until 6 30 p.m. Once you do it for a few days, you almost look forward to it. You work out a lot better, it's a lot more efficient for your life. You think a lot more clearly. And then when you do eat. You could be a lot freer on how you eat, right? And you feel you feel fulfilled when you eat. I'm not saying going out and eating fast food. You eat a nice salad, a lot of proteins, some steak, you know, potatoes, whatever you want to eat, mac and cheese, whatever. You can eat more of what you want because you're only consuming that amount of calories. And a, and a person at your size, they should be eating 2,500, 3,000 calories a day probably. I love food, bro. Right. But think about it. Let's say you just eat. 1800 and that's your only meal and you feel fulfilled you're going to lose weight this is how it works okay. all right new poll question jeff we started the show today with one smitty simped out of course and took the easy way i i took the hard way i think you're leaning on my side jeff i think you're i think the poll question bailey can you pop the damn question can you pop it up on the screen would you rather go to bed alone forever or share a bed with someone forever you are we already know jeff's, jeff's answer i'm not gonna say nothing but but hold on, hold on, hold on. what do you think the answer is? Jeff, he don't let motherfuckers in his bed now in real life. 
When when he has he talk he said when girls come over they fuck on the carpet they fuck on they fuck on the toilet they fuck in the shower they fuck outside against the house when the lights off they fuck in the car anywhere they fuck on the futon anywhere outside of his mattress that's what they're doing he he'll, he'll fuck you in the library you're not fucking him on his bed he's already said that he got he got night sheets pillow so I already know his answer but I mean let's hear from him um thanks. Let's hear from I him. Say this. As I get older and as I progress higher and higher, eventually it would be nice to have someone in my house. I don't, that's the one thing I don't want to do. I've never slept with anyone. I don't want to do it, but I'm sure at some point never? it'll be. Well, I've done it in like one night. You know, like, like cuddled and, 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 and. Oh, sure. Had that, sure, had that sure. ass on you. you I'm talking about like out. every night, you know, week on week. Like I, I've, I've lived alone for so long. I don't know how it ever. Like that would be a real change. Even a dog, bro. I don't know if I could do that. I've I've never had anyone here. I my house is the way I want it. I don't gotta worry about anything. If I make the mess, I clean it up. That's it. I don't know if I could deal with someone else. I've it, it's again, it's just my routine. That's just how it's been. It would take a really important person. And nowadays, bro, it's just hard to find, man. You know, so if it comes, it comes. But I really enjoy. Coming home, doing what I want to do. I don't have to answer the shit. I like that. If it comes, it comes. But I don't look for it. I respect that. I mean, I respect that, man. I just, uh, man. Eagles, uh, Eagles release. Think there's Kevin beauty Ball. in having somebody, man. I get it, though. Like, when you're by yourself, you can do whatever the fuck you want to. You ain't got to feel bad for nothing. No decision. It's all about you. So you're, you're able to be uh, completely selfish. And I get it. And when you're in a relationship or have a woman or whatever, they staying with you. Yeah, you have to put put their feelings first. And a lot of times, consider them. I get it, but there's a lot of pros. Ain't nothing How like that. Later with the woman, she got her ass on you, man. You just cold, but you she keeping you warm. You got the ain't nothing How like that. How long have you been with your girl? Huh? How long have you been with your wife or her girl? I've been with her for shit. We've been together for like 14 years. See, that's the thing. 14 years, I would have been 20. In that case, you were 16. It's my high school sweetheart. Okay, so see, that's different. She's a real loyal one, she's known you forever, right? You have a one, like she knew me when I when I when I was I wasn't big Smitty, I wasn't even Smitty, I was just Darnell, like I was just fucking from the hood, hair all fucked up, see that strawberries on, like the out the mud. That's something that just doesn't happen anymore. I will die for her, Jeff, right now. They see that. Do you know the biggest problem I have now when I go out Tell is me. I have no issue talking to women. I love talking to people. I, I'll talk to any girl. We have a good time. My worry now is it's very simple. Is what this girl's telling me true? I've been two girls over the last two weeks, back to back weeks. Someone's come up to me and says, Hey, I seen you over at the place. I heard you over at the place the other week. You're with a so-and-so. You know her man was outside looking for her, right? Driving around trying to find her, right? I said, wait, she told me she was single. He goes, nah, her man was outside looking around for her. So now I got to worry about are these chicks like, and when you're drunk, you don't think about that. You just see a girl, she's pretty, you start talking to her. And if she tells me whatever, that's that's what that's what these girls do now. They should have lied. They should have said, oh, I'm single when I'm not, like. There's so many sh- bullshit things out, and there. that's fucked up too. Cause that that could put, that could have put you in a fucking exactly. dangerous situation. That's what I say, and, and I'm if you know me, I am two steps ahead of everything. I never put myself in a bad position. I constantly thinking what could happen from this decision I make, right? And sometimes you can't control that because again, when you're out of spot, you don't really think about that. And if she's there with her girls, you just assume okay, she's cool, whatever. But I don't know. She has a crazy ex. She has a guy who doesn't accept shit. Like, whatever. It's, it's it's rough out here. You got a good hey, one. Uh, two two real talks of Jaws Jackins, real quick, uh, Bailey. If you can get that Cam Newton uh, explanation in, I also want to throw this at you guys, Jeff. We do a real talk of Jaws Jackins. Listen to this explanation on why he believes Kobe should never have gotten pat- surpassed by LeBron. Casual stat watchers and, you know, people who are conditioned by the media, the mainstream media, which has a huge disconnect from actual basketball, they get confused when this comes up, right? And I'm going to leave Jordan out of this. Uh, Most players that played against both Kobe and LeBron, the reason they always pick Kobe is because 
game for game, skill for skill, and just mentality and will, it's Kobe. By large, there's a pretty clear gap here. You know, there's two things LeBron did better than Kobe on the basketball court. He's a superior slasher because of how big, strong, and powerful he was. He's a gifted athlete, right? And he was a better passer. Uh, other than that, Kobe had better footwork. Kobe had better mid-range game. Kobe had a better three-point shot. Kobe had a better free throw shot. Uh, Kobe had better post game. Uh, Kobe is a better shot maker in general, right? Scoring is the main thing of the game. But more than anything, you know, Kobe is a more tenacious defender. His will, you know, picking you up 48, uh, picking you up 94 feet, you know, picking you up in the half court, guarding the other team's best players. Kobe's a better player off the ball. You could put him in a triangle. Princeton, he was going to take away from other guys' game. He didn't need to dominate the ball. And everything wasn't about, you know, catered through him. Uh, you know, in, in, in terms of their will, you know, just their mentality, every time you want Kobe. Real talk or jaw jacking? The realest talk I've heard in a long time. Real talk. That, that is – who is that guy? He's really good, whoever that is. It is a podcast, I think, with Stephon Marbury, if I'm not mistaken. See, yeah. you know, I like, I like the, I, that guy because he doesn't deliver, oh, did you see that? You know, it's like, just shut the fuck up and tell us, okay? Like, that guy – and it was legit. Kobe was just a better player than LeBron James. He just I, is. I, like, I don't get when he got surpassed, man. I'm trying to still find out when it was. And, and Kobe wasn't, as 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 a lot of us know, Kobe wasn't fucking jawing with the refs after every play. Oh, good. Walking, good, good, good. crying. And you know another thing about Kobe? He was just a like. I'm not saying – I just don't find LeBron James likable. I think off the court, he's a douche. You know, he, he acts very pretentious. It's always me, me, me about everything. I liked Kobe as a party. He seemed likable to me. Now, when I was a kid, a lot of people don't realize when I was a kid, I hated Kobe when I was a kid because he he wouldn't accept that he was from this area. He would say, when, when we went to the finals against the Lakers in 2000s, he says, I'm going to rip their hearts out. I said to my dad, he's from here. Why is he saying that? <laughs> and he goes, this is a competitor. That's what they do. And then as I got older, I realized that this guy is, is, is a great. And I remember when he scored 81, I was 16. I was 16. I remember going to the school the next day. He cooked. Mars Peterson, Jalen Rose, Alvin Child. He, he cooked them, all of them. That performance is – and then his last game, like, it's just – they don't make people like that. They, I, make they don't. And I, I use this example all the time. Like, they always talk about – I have yet to see LeBron create his own shot at the end of a game to win it. He always makes the safe pass, and everyone defends that shit. No, because you can't make the last shot because you're one-sided. You have no left hand. And Kobe would have had so much better feet work, fundamentally. And remember this, too. In, in, in LeBron's long story career, can like what I just did with Kobe, 81-point game, the last game, you know, some of the, some of the just uh, incredible performances he got – I can't think of a game that LeBron I, – I don't think of a game like that with LeBron. Do you? No, no, no. Listen, I'm a Kobe god through but and did, through. When did LeBron, LeBron – LeBron against the Detroit Pistons early in his career, against the Rasheed Wild, then the Wild, he got past him and got to the final early in his career. Multiple times in the uh, – uh, uh, in the, I mean, the being down 3-1 against Ghost State Warriors, he fucking hooped on that back end but, 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 uh, of that finals. I mean, all like these, – All these players, Will, uh, Kobe, you know – all these different guys. Even Allen Iverson has five, like, legit, beautiful moments. Like, LeBron's had a lot of good moments. But as someone in your chat says, no, but I'm not, I don't think I'd be if, – if I'm an NBA player, is anyone scared to face LeBron? No. Kobe cooked people. Like, he embarrassed Matt Barnes. He embarrassed certain people. And he didn't even try to embarrass him. He just did it. You want to fuck with me? All right, let's go. And the last one, a real talk, Jaw Jack. We had we were we were about to have the guy that fought Cam Newton on. He backed out last minute. Um, Smitty has to go here in a second for a meeting, but oh, let's really? go. You were about to have that. You were about to have him on. Stephon cool. Brown, yeah, a buddy of mine called us and that was a friend. He's a fan, and we actually were going to have him on. And 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 I'm yeah, apparently there's been a lot of other things that have come out since I I've, I've learned. Cam Newton is now saying this a minute a minute long deal, and uh, we'll end it on this. Is this real talk or Jaw Jacking? I think about the kids who look up to me and also whether they verbalize their appreciation or just stare in amazement. I feel like I let them down mm. because I can't sit up there and say, hey, bro, you got to be bigger than that. And then all of a sudden I do that. And that just goes to show you, you got to always stay in control of your emotions. And that's where the humanistic side came in at. 
And there's no excuse. It's, it's really not. Because it could have been a melee. Um, more violence could have stemmed from that. Yeah, anything. And it, it, it's just not called for. And on top of that, it's, it's echoing something that's been permeating for years. Black people. Why, why, why I got to be at a black event? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I could easily say, damn, like, I can play the victim, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold myself to that same standard, bro, to say, like, look, everywhere that I go, people talk. People say, yo, why you didn't jump on a fumble? Hey, yo, Von Miller, your daddy. Hey, yo, like, Mac Jones took your job. Hey, yo, Brock Parody is better than you. Hey, yo, like, she, you a free agent. That's, that's normal. I'm used to playing in front of a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. and millions watching. And I let one person dictate how I feel. No, I can't do that. But I did that day. Real talk of John Jackson. Real talk. He, I think he owned it. I mean, I can't, I can't be mad. He made him, he, Made a mistake. If you, regardless, he has to say some blame. We don't know all the details, you know, regardless, you know, but at the end of the day, being in that position in the first place where you're fighting at a camp, whether they swung first, whatever the case may be, you still got to take some blame. And he's taking He's not playing victim. He's saying he feels bad for the kid. He led talking about the kids first. And then he went on to just take full blown ownership, made no excuses. As a man, I respect that. I did too until the racial thing came. I didn't understand that. Like he mentioned being like, what does that have to do with that? Well, I think he was saying that because, uh, like, uh, everybody's making comments like, like why yeah. is this happening at like a paid Manny's camp or the white? Why, why is this going to always why is always going to happen at the black people's camp? Shit like that. But, but again, because Peyton Manning doesn't fight people at football games. That's why. Like, it's, it's, it's nothing to do. It's like the it's TikTok I saw yesterday. I got to ask you guys about this. There was this woman on TikTok complaining that. Why didn't Angel Reese get into the top 10? She, she was mad because Caitlin Clark mm. is the number one player according to ESPN of women's players, which we can all agree with. She is. It ain't even, okay. it ain't even close. Right. And, and, and this woman's claiming that the reason Angel Reese isn't in the top 10 is because she's black. And people are just like, well, no, she's just not as good. She's nowhere like, near as good as Caitlin Clark. Right, but, but it's also like with women. Like if you say something about a woman, it's misogynistic. You know, it's like, no. I just – Hey, Jeff, on a football note – I just don't get any of this shit. Like, what is that? Yeah, mean? I don't either. As we end and the shout show – Shout out to Kayla Clark. She's about to break up uh, yeah. Pistol Pete Maravich's record on Sunday and have the most <laughs> points in college basketball history, men or women. This is That's a phenomenal feat. And got to shout her out before we go, too. Right. My fault, JB. Yeah. Shout her out, being overhyped. The, the Eagles uh, cut Kevin Baird. They're going to save $13 million, Jeff, uh, your backyard. Now they're north of about $40 million in cap space. What do you want to see the Eagles do this offseason? Yeah, it, just, it just didn't work out with Kevin. You know, I, I don't know what happened. I, he was coming home to the area. I, I don't know what happened there. But he just was just not a factor. Um, listen, they have a lot to do, a lot to do on defense. This is a bad defense. There's a lot of, though – I think with the new coaching moves they've made, you got to address most of it on defense. The offense is fine. You know, under Kellen Moore, I think they'll be fine. I'd like maybe another running back, a third receiver, but they need to go out and get some younger corners, um, another safety. They have to uh, uh, um, believe in linebackers for once. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. will be perfect on this team. Go out in the second round and draft Jeremiah Trotter Jr. It's very simple. Um, one other thing, I guess I, this is a football question for you guys. Maybe you can address it next week. James Bradbury had a great season previous to this past season. He was shit this season. Will Vic Fangio being there, maybe a new injection, will, will that make James Bradbury back to, let's say, half of what he was the previous year? That kind of stuff you have to have hopes happen for you as well. Um, but they have a lot of things to do on defense, a lot. Yeah, it's going to be a good talk for us, Smitty and I, next week. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we got to end the show. We appreciate you jumping on. Nay, dude. Notorious Nay, dudes. Uh, we'll have Nay -do. every week. Never know what we're going to do next week for Notorious Nay, dude. We're going to talk about it. We'll get to it, and we'll see you Monday. I want to shout out to Matt, by the way. I saw he had Coach Primo. That's pretty cool. Shout yeah, yeah. Matt. Matt. Oh, somebody uh, called me, and maybe we, I could jump on and talk about it. I'm sure yeah, you had uh, some good questions to ask. Uh, hey, you got to go on the show. You got to go on Matt. So I told Matt, I said, you got to strike white iron's hot. You need to go on Whitlock immediately. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Love hey, you, much love to everybody. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. And let's pound the like. Let's have a thousand starting on Monday. Bailey, take us away. Issues get pressed so passage, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass around.